The following is a presentation of the Alabama High School Athletic Association on HSTV, High School Sports Television. Historic Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama on a football Friday night. Welcome in to the Alabama High School Athletic Association Super 6 State Championships game number four of six state championship games coming up next. The Class 5A title game between the Eufaula Tigers and the Athens Golden Eagles. And welcome in John Holder with you live at Legion Field. Another cold night. Temperatures expected to drop down into the low 20s by the end of this game here at Legion Field in Birmingham. HSTV proud to be a part of the Super 6. Glad to partner with the Alabama High School Athletic Association to bring you these Super 6 state championships. Of course, HSTV is a network exclusively devoted to high school athletic state championships and all-star events in the state of Alabama. We began this back in June with the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star Classic in Mobile, and we are certainly excited to bring you even more championship and all-star events here in the state of Alabama. HSTV, where the games are on. Earlier this afternoon, the Class 3 a title decided here at Legion Field between Pike County and Clay County. Turnovers the story. Nine turnovers in the, get in the game by just Clay County. Eleven turnovers total. We'll see Chase Horn here. A bad pitch. That was a turnover by Clay County. Monell Wilson in slow motion here. He has the ball just ripped out and taken. Another fumble here. Recovered by Pike County. As we said, eleven turnovers in this game total. Two by Pike County and nine by Clay County. Tobias so Lee, great game throwing the football for Pike County as they win the game 44 to 14, taking advantage of those nine turnovers by Clay County, who came in as the number one team in the state. They had 28 games they had won in a row, but not tonight as Pike County, the defending Class 3A state champions. They win it again, their fifth title in school history, including, folks, uh, they win it again this year here at Legion Field in Birmingham. We're joined right now by Terry. Terry Curtis, he's the head football coach at UMS Wright Prep High School in Mobile. They won the 4A championship last year here at Legion Field. And coach, you moved up to Class 5A this year, took your team all the way to the semifinals. And last Friday night, you ran into this Yafala Tiger team. And I promise you, they're a buzzsaw, John. They got a fine football team. It all starts with their quarterback. They run the true fear. They read it all the way out. And, and uh, I've heard a lot of good things about Athens. So it's ought to be a heck of a football game. And I'll tell you something, Coach, uh, we were talking about earlier the first time in 30 years that we've had Athens playing for a state championship. It's been 25 years since you has won a state championship. Obviously their first time for both of these teams to play here at Legion Field. You know all about the experience of playing here. Talk about what these teams are experiencing right now just moments from kickoff. Well, wow, I promise you they've got all kind of butterflies and uh, the excitement of, of being here. Neither one of them been here which makes it pretty even I think. Uh, uh, you always experience it big here. I mean if you've been here you know what to expect. You know what to go through with these some of these teams have never played on TV before. So, and then the, the excitement of Legion Field and so forth. So, so the one I think that can get through that the, the quickest has got a good chance to win this ball game because that's when not necessarily turnovers, but you have missed assignments and and all just because you're so pumped up and so emotional charged that you make some mistakes in your keys and reads. So, I think the one who settles down into the game the quickest has a good chance of winning. Okay, Coach Curtis will join us back here at halftime. Coming up next, the 5A state championship game right here on HSTV. Hello? It's for you. More sports.
four teams. More winners. Encore Sports Medicine. The sun has set over Legion Field, ushering in some very frigid conditions in Birmingham, Alabama tonight. But things promise to heat up very soon. It's the 5A state championship game between Eufaula and Athens. Hey, hello again, everyone. I'm Mickey Shadricks. Once again, welcome back into HSTV's continuing coverage of the Super 6 High School Football State Championships. Well, you know, when the 2006 season started, expectations were high for both these teams. Eufaula came out of the gates fast, and they really never let their foot off the pedal so far. They remain unbeaten at 14-0, and they're riding high, coming into their first ever appearance in the Super 6. Meanwhile, for Athens, their team started off their season pretty good as well. Well, they opened up 4-0, but they stumbled in the second part of their schedule, losing three of their five final regular season games. But the important thing, they won four straight playoff games coming into this, their first ever Super 6 appearance. Well, joining me in the booth tonight for the call of this 5A state championship game will be former Alabama quarterback Tyler Watts and also former college coach Boji Wood. I'll start with Boji, and Boji will begin with Eufaula. You know, they have one of the most dynamic and exciting players in the state in quarterback Jarrell Jernigan, and I tell you what, he is somebody that can really make a lot of plays anywhere on the field. That's someone that Athens will have to keep a close eye on tonight. That's right, Mickey. You follow Jernigan. is a bit undersized at 5'9", 171 pounds, but his athletic ability speaks for itself as he's being heavily recruited by colleges all over the southeast. Alone, he has accounted for over 2,000 yards of total offense and has rushed for 21 touchdowns. Well, Jernigan also had a couple of 50-plus yard touchdowns in their huge win over UMS Wright last week in the semifinal round of the playoffs. Welcome into the booth now, former Alabama quarterback Tyler Watts. And Tyler, good to have you with us. And I'll immediately go to the Athens quarterback. Jernigan, you know, gets a lot, lot of things done with his legs. Ezel can also hurt you with his arm. Absolutely. Rob Ezel's a great quarterback. Watch him a little bit in pregames. Good, strong arm. Does a nice job commanding this offense. He's kind of the ringmaster. All-time, all-purpose leader in the state of Alabama. You just can't say enough about that stat right there. That is very impressive. Well, he likes to throw the ball. Also had 78 yards rushing in their semifinal win last week over J.O. Johnson. Well, the uh, fourth member of our broadcast crew tonight patrolling the sidelines here at Legion Field for this 5A title game, Kevin Hensley. Well, Mickey, the last time these two clubs were in the state championship game, a man named Paul Bear Bryant was still stalking the sidelines here at Legion Field, competing for and winning national championships. But that's not to say these two programs haven't been in the hunt the past several years. Over the past two seasons, Athens has made the quarterfinals and the semifinals, but came up just a little bit short in their bid to get to the Super Six. Whereas for Eufaula, they've been in the playoffs nine straight years, but only got past the second round once in nine. 1999 before this season rolling to a perfect record. So the butterflies you would think would be pretty prevalent for these two clubs tonight as they try to rewrite some history in their school record books, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Kevin. And it has been a while for these two teams in terms of winning a state title. Again, this is their first ever appearance in the Super Six. It is the 5A state championship game coming your way next on HSTV.
let's talk about computerized phone numbers. Let's talk about being stuck on hold for 20 minutes. Let's talk about forgetting all of that. Let's talk about a real person that picks up the phone and knows you by name. Let's talk about a relationship. I'm David Adcock, President and CEO. I've been with America's First 33 years. America's First is not about delivering profits, but delivering value and service to our members. All people living, working, and worshiping in our seven county area surrounding Birmingham are now eligible to join America's First. Join today and you'll see what it's like to do business with a financial organization that has your best interest at heart. America's First Federal Credit Union. Now you can join. The Super Six on HSTV is brought to you by Alabama Power, always on, by Alpha, Let's Talk About Tomorrow, by MSouth, The Relationship People, and by Encore, the exclusive provider of the athletic training services for the Super Six. Hey, Donnie, will you give me one of those? Well, it is Friday night primetime in the Super Six. And here come both combatants in the 5A state championship game. The Athens Golden Eagles fired up, set to take on the undefeated top-ranked Eufaula Tigers in what should be a very interesting matchup here in this 5A title game. Well, it's been an interesting road for both teams, as we kind of touched on in the open. Taking a look at the road to the Super 6 in Class 5A. There you see you fall at the top of your screen, beating uh, St. Paul's and advancing after their big win over UMS Wright last week in the semifinal round. Athens getting past Hartzell, a rival of theirs up in the northern part of the state. Then uh, for the second time this season, beating J.O. Johnson in the semifinals by three, setting up our championship matchup tonight. And there's a good look at you follow head coach Dan Plagueis. Very excited when we met up with him last weekend in Montgomery for the coaches meeting. He was very excited about his team season, about the opportunity to play for a state championship, as was this gentleman, Alan Creasy, the Athens head coach. A lot of people have kind of labeled this football team a little bit of a Cinderella story in this year's Super Six. Creasy doesn't buy into that at all. Does people maybe outside his program consider them a Cinderella team, but not his players and his coaches. Athens will receive the kickoff to begin the 5A state championship game, and we are underway from Legion Field. A short kick that will be fielded by an up man. That is Carlos Jones, a big bruiser who goes 6'2", 285, tackled by Terrence Thomas for you follow first and 10 for the Golden Eagles as they come out on offense. And we talked about Rob Ezell. What a career he has had. All time career leader in total offense. There you see his numbers this season. Thrown for over 2,500 yards. And there, there is no doubt that this young man will have to have a very good football game for Athens to have a chance to win tonight. Athens opens up, spreading the field a bit. Three receivers to the right. Ezell. Slings it out to about the 34-yard line, connecting with the one Tinsdale, the senior. He is met immediately by Kendrick Dennis. Here's a look at the Russell starting lineups for Athens. There you see Jacquez Pride. He is no doubt Rob Ezell's favorite target on offense. Up front, Evans, Davis, Hogan, Rogers, and Miller doing the blocking for this Athens offensive football team. Second down and 10 for the first play of the game. We already see the speed of this Ufala defense. Very good team speed up and down the chart. After a short delay, second down and 10. Ezeal looking over to the sideline. Now he's ready, takes the whole snap. Football comes loose. A little bit of a problem on the exchange and a turnover right off the bat. You fall up. Number 22, Terrence Mahoney comes up with the fumble and you fall up. A team that forced four turnovers against UMS right last week. Forces one in the first minute of the game here tonight. 
Just a bad snap allows the defense to get in there. You fall on first down, play rushing four, dropping seven with a big play. The bad snap on second down creates the turnover to set them up in great position at the 30. Rocky start for the Athens Golden Eagles. You follow. Their first possession of the game begins at the Athens 30. And they turn it right back over. Antonio Long stepping into the path of the pass from Jarrell Jernigan, who doesn't throw that much, is more of a threat running the football. How about that call, guys? You follow come out throwing on first down. And sometimes you can get caught being a little too cute. Looked like a busted play, just a lot of misdirection going on. But you kind of wonder why a team that's had so much success running the football with great field position doesn't just come out and take control. That's exactly right, Tyler. They're coming out. They're known for that true veer offense. And the first play out of the gates, after a big turnover, in scoring position, they themselves have a turnover. Down. Athens gets it right back. Screen pass. Out to Justin Brown. Boy, again, the speed of this Ufala defense. Kendrick Dennis hustling over the junior, making the stop for no gain. Here is the Russell defensive starting lineup for Athens. The defensive front, uh, Courtney Upshaw, Johnson, Cruz, and Terrence Mahoney. The linebacking crew, Thomas, Harris, and Hardy. And in the secondary for Ufala, Desmond Thomas, Chris Wilson, Kendrick Dennis, who just made that tackle, and Damian Wilson. Flag on that previous play. Get our call from a referee tonight. Fine warning on Ufala. This is their first warning. Well, it seems like no matter what level of play, especially early on in an emotional game, those coaches are crowding the field. Got to give those officials room to work over there. Get that first sideline warning out of the way tonight early on. You know, especially on the visitor sideline, because that's where the chains are. So those guys have got to have a, a little bit more room to operate than the teams that are on the press box side. I uh, watch it. set for play second down and 10 for the Athens Golden Eagles. Both teams exchanging turnovers here early in the first quarter. He's a feeling that he somehow eludes the pursuit of one defender, gets the pass away, and it is complete. Justin Brown taken down by Desmond Thomas. And there we see the athletic ability and playmaking ability of Rob Ezel, a 31-yard completion. Yeah, doing a great job. This play should have never have happened. Man across the board, that time for Ufala, taking advantage. No backs in the backfield for Ezel, and he just makes a great play right here. You can't say a whole lot more. One of those things, Tyler, when you break that blitz, then those receivers are out there basically running free because you can only cover them for so long. And he had a good six, seven seconds before he had to release the football. First and 10, Athens. Rob Ezel scrambling and picking up close to nine yards. Stop made by Terrence Thomas, the leading tackler on this Ufala defense, but a, a very positive gain on first down. And you know that Ufala is going to have to get to Ezel in order to be successful tonight, this time just taking advantage of an opportunity, little crease right there. And you see, he's extremely quick, throws the ball really well. He's also extremely quick. And Ufala drops back in the zone. They got burned on the man coverage. Uh, on the, what, Ezel escaped the blitz, made the throw, and now they've gone back to the zone, but they've got to hem him up. And here is the pitch to Pharrell Williams. Comes into this game with just over 850 yards rushing, averaging about five yards per carry. Xavier Cruz on the stop. And this will move the chains again. Athens picking up second consecutive first down. Ezel coming into this game with over 3,300 all-purpose yards. Again, most of that yardage coming through the air, but as he has already shown early in this football game, very capable runner as well. This time, nothing doing for Williams. He was hit behind the line of scrimmage by Courtney Upshaw and also Ufala's Travis Mahoney. You know, Tyler, I'm a firm believer from a defensive standpoint, whatever your offense is that your team's run, you're good at stopping that. You follow runs that veer. They're good at stopping the run. I think they're going to have trouble containing Ezel, and Athens may have a good chance to make a lot of big plays in the passing game tonight versus this Ufala defense. 
That play loses three yards. Second down and 13. He's in. Back to throw. Quickly gets it out of there and connects with his receiver, Vincent Azzarello. And another positive play out of the passing game. Takes the football inside the 30-yard line to the 27. That'll set up a third and short. One of the easiest things for a passing offense to do is to face a defense that plays a lot of zone, where they're just going to play soft, allow Ezel to read the defense that time, just looking at the outside linebacker. He drops off, throw the little five-yard in, pick up eight yards. Possession play, third down and three for this Golden Eagle offense. Ezel, he's got a strong arm, but threw that one behind his intended receiver. Azalero as he went in his direction once again, so that creates a fourth and three in decision time for Coach Creasy. Kendrick Dennis on the coverage over there was almost in position to make that interception, and he'd been able to do that. There was nothing but green turf in front of him for about 76 yards. And the decision is to go for it. Fourth down and three. And now we have a flag thrown. I think they got you followed a jump. Hard count made him jump. If so, they'll get the first down the easy way. Dead ball, offsides on the defense. It'll be a five yard penalty, for first down. Well, that's the way to get it. It is. And I tell you, that's one of those things that uh, you go over in every day on defensive line. You don't listen react to the football moving. But again, when you're in the heat of the moment in the game, that hard count draws you off sides. He's in. Again, getting it out of there quickly. And he connects with Jacquez Pride, the leading receiver on this Golden Eagle team. He stopped by the other number three on the other side of the football, Desmond Thomas. And that time just a five yard hitch. But the, the, the beauty of this play is, is contact is made as soon as the ball is called by Pride. But as you can see, you pick up six yards. Athens will take that on first down every time. It just opens up the amount of plays they can run on second and third. Second down, Ezel rolling right. And he cannot turn the corner. Great pursuit from the backside by Sotero Hardy, the junior linebacker. Outstanding play. Trying to get to the outside this time with Ezel, ease, but as you can see, Ufala's done a great job on a lot of speed on this defensive front for Ufala, and you see it right there. Courtney Upshaw, the six foot two, 210 pound defensive end, putting pressure on Ezel there. Big third down play here. Let's see if Ufala goes back man or stays on. Need to take it down inside the 12 yard line. Does happens on third and long. Ezel. Pressure coming, they set up the screen pass to the backside. Williams has it inside the 10. Taken off his feet at the three yard line by Damian Wilson. Tyler, you said it earlier, for that offense, if they've got a good feel of what you're trying to do defensively from a coverage standpoint, it's very easy for the offensive coordinator to sit over there and call plays. I'll tell you what, another luxury that Athens appears to have at this point. No offense is good without a good offensive front. Those guys get overlooked so much, but as you can see this time, getting downfield, getting bodies on bodies, and that's what allow Athens to get down to the three-yard line. 18-yard gain on third and 10, sets up first and goal from the three. Here's the big bruising fullback, Carlos Jones, and he is in for the touchdown. Nothing fancy this time for Jones, just right up the middle. Down at the goal line, it's me versus you. You got to make a guy either miss or run over him. Jones ju does both. Extra point attempt by Matt Jackson is true. So Athens strikes first in this 5A state championship game as they take it down against a very tough Ufala defense. They're up 7 0. Back to Legion Field in HSTV's coverage of the Super Six. When I was making a decision about college, I had plenty of choices. Big universities, smaller schools. I don't think I've ever been as impressed as I was the first time I visited the University of West Alabama. Everywhere I looked, I found quality programs led by faculty who could be anywhere, but love it here, and students that love the UWA experience. There's a sense of warmth, of family, 
It just feels right. There's something about this place. Since 1938, there's been only one place where you can order the freshest Gulf seafood around, and that's Winsell's Oyster House. You know Winsell's is where you can order our famous Gulf oysters, fried, stewed, or nude every day. Fresh seafood, gumbo, crab claw, stuffed flounder, whoo, it just doesn't get much better. And the list goes on and on. And with four great locations, you can treat your seafood craving from almost anywhere. Winsell's Oyster House is proud to be a long-standing tradition for fresh Gulf seafood and a proud fixture on the Gulf Coast for 68 years. Life comes at you fast. Huntsville has a lot to offer to host any sporting event. An initiative of Mayor Loretta Spencer, the Huntsville Sports Commission since 2000 has recruited and hosted premier national, regional, and state events representing 14 different sports. With hardworking volunteers, top-notch facilities, wonderful attractions, and a wide variety of restaurants and hotels, Huntsville, Alabama has everything to make any tournament an outstanding event. Check us out online at HuntsvilleSports.org. And back at Legion Field, first quarter action, 5A state championship game about midway through the first quarter. Athens taking the football down the field. A very impressive drive against this Ufala defense, taking a 7 to nothing lead. A Ufala defense that is giving up only about 10 points per game. There you see the Russell Athletic scoring recap. 10 plays, 74 yards. Almost five minutes of time off the clock in. Big fullback, Carlos Jones taking it in for the touchdown. The Athens Golden Eagles, the only third seed in Super 6 history to make it to the Super 6. They find themselves with an early lead over top ranked and unbeaten Region 2 champion, Ufala Tigers. Fala doing a good job of pouncing on this football way around midfield. Number 41 for the Tigers. Courtney Upshaw alertly getting on it. And there you see the Ufala quarterback, Jarrell Jernigan, who threw the interception on their only offensive play so far in the quarter. You see his passing number so far this season. But again, this young man is mostly dangerous running the football in this Veer offense that has been talked about so much leading into this game tonight. Here we see the fullback, Shyron Parker, who had a big 77-yard touchdown run last week in the win over UMS Wright, picks up 15 on first down. Here's a look at the Russell Athletic starting lineups for Ufala. Shyron Parker, as we said, the long touchdown run last week, also had a three-yard touchdown for his team. Up front, it's Martin, Irvin, Crouch, Turner, and Sasser. Mickey, Coach Don Creasy and his staff must have seen something trying that onside kick this early in the game because you're giving a ball control offense very good field position. Very aggressive play early in the ball game. Here is Parker. He spins his way down to about the 31-yard line for a gain of four. So the fullback pretty active early on. Here's a look at the Russell defensive lineup for Athens. The front out anchored by big Alfred McCullough, 6'3", 315-pound Alabama commitment. Linebacking crew Ming, Stinnett, Wallace, and Pepper will have their hands full against this Ufala offense, as will the secondary. Long, Stinnett, Tisdale, and Joaquez Pride who will be playing both ways tonight. Second down and early movement by the right guard for Ufala. Coming out of his stance early, number 77, Ryan Turner, the junior. Ball start on the offense. Be a five yard penalty. Second down. You know, Tyler, this Deer offense is, is kind of a, what you would call an old timey offense with the day and age of the spread and the no huddle. But this Tiger offense is very effective in moving the football on the ground and controlling the clock. Second down and 10 after the five yard penalty. Here's Jernigan trying to get to the corner. Outstanding play by the Golden Eagles, Robert Brown.
Well, the true op the true triple option when it's run correctly is one of the most, if not the most difficult offenses to stop. Theoretically, there's no way you're right. You have to play assignment football, regardless of where the ball is. One man has his job, whether it's quarterback, fullback, or pitch man, and he has to st stick to his assignment. You're right, and it looks like that Athens is going to the three-man front, letting the linebackers come and play the perimeter forwards to stop this triple option. Third down and long, Jernigan. Pump fakes and takes off. And here's what the young man does so well. Look at the balance and the second and third effort as he will pick up a first down down to the 22-yard line. Tackle made that time by Athens Antonio Long after a 22-yard pickup on third and long. This time just once again, third and long, as you said, you follow just resort back to what they do best, running the ball. This is more or less just a draw play for the quarterback. They know he's going to run it all the way. And as you can said, initial contact right there made right at the first down marker. Incredible effort. Looks like and possibly a face mask on the play as well. No flag. Here's the give straight up the middle. Not much this time for the Ufala ball carrier. Tackle made that time by Alfred McCullough. And we talked in the pregame show about Jernigan being a little bit small, but again, in a Veer offense, you really don't have to be the prototype great quarterback standing about 6'1", 6'2". This is an offense that's more geared toward an athletic type quarterback that can run the football and get on the corner and put pressure on the defense. Jernigan does a good job of that. You fall now in the red zone, late first quarter, trying to answer Athens' score. Here is the pitch to the tailback. Nothing doing at all for Chris Williams, the junior, coming into this football game with just under 1,000 yards rushing. He was taken off his feet by William Ming of Athens. Ming does a good job of coming up field right now, fighting off the block, keeping contained, turning the running back back inside toward the pursuit, keeping a very minimal game for the Tiger offense. It's all about responsibilities, as you said, Ming doing an outstanding, even if he doesn't make that play. Did you see how many black jerseys he turned that runner right back into? Well, another third and long, and Jernigan will burn Ufala's first time out of the game, stopping the clock with 2.46 left in the first quarter, a very important third down at eight upcoming for the Tigers. We'll step aside for a break. 5A state championship game from Legion Field on HSTV. The tackle starts staying up.
5A state championship game from Legion Field. There you see the score. Athens leading Eufaula. Late first quarter, a big third down and eight play coming up for this Tiger offense. They were in this situation just a moment ago, and their quarterback, Jarrell Jernigan, came up with the big play. Let's see if they dial up number 11 here on third and long. Jernigan looking to throw, lost the football as he started to release it and got all he could inside the 20 down to about the 17-yard line as Athens William Ming coming over to make his second tackle of the game. So here's a fourth down. Good job by the Athens defense again by keeping contained. Linebackers flowing to the football. He does get on the perimeter, but good secondary containment coming up. Ming circling back and making the play, bringing up fourth down. And it'll bring on a How about field that? goal try. Jernigan's tried a couple of passes tonight. Not very good results. One interception, then a near fumble on that pass attempt. This will be spotted at the 24, a 34-yard attempt for the Tigers as they try to get on the scoreboard here late in the first quarter. And the kick is wide to the left. No good by Clayton Slade. Football's got to feel like a cylinder block out there on his foot. <laughs> Big stop there by the Athens defense on the onside kick. Uh, Ufala takes over with great field position, but gets no points. And now Ezel gets a chance to go back and uh, see if he can drive the Eagles down for another score. But even though they didn't score, you, you still set your defense up. Now Athens has to go 80 yards for a score themselves. So field position definitely as the game starts to slow down a little bit. The nerves calm down. Definitely going to come into play. Athens taking back over after the missed field goal. First and ten. Golden Eagles send three receivers to the left. Now Brown in motion. Here is Ezell. Loses his footing. Keeps his balance somehow. Somebody lost a shoe. And finally the pursuit of Eufaula will get to him. As Harris coming over to make the stop behind the line of scrimmage. A big loss on first down. And that's probably the most entertaining six-yard loss you'll ever see. <laughs> Ezell comes back, sits up, looks downfield, nothing there, comes out of his shoe, and then tries to make something happen before he slips on the turf and is corralled by the Tiger defense. This is that new artificial turf. It's a lot of chewed up tennis shoes, rubber. I don't I think it's like a hot dog. If there's anything with rubber in it, they throw out there. And you'll find yourself, it's, it doesn't stick like that old turf would. Of course, you probably don't tear up as many knees on it as you used to either. Six-yard loss, Ezell looking to the sideline, getting the play. Athens got to be careful here. This kind of situation, this speedy Ufala defense can tee off on you. Second down and 16. Ezell from inside his 10. Gets it away quickly and overshoots his intended receiver, trying to connect with Antonio Long. And it is incomplete, the first incomplete pass thrown by Ezell in this football game. Again, you follow rushing four and dropping seven and breaking on the football. They're going to give them the little underneath pass and come up and try to make the play. If you're Athens, you know, hopefully you can juke one guy and then you're down the sideline. But you follow seems content on being very conservative defensively and maybe picking their points to come with a blitz. See if they come after Ezell here. Third and 16. They rush three. Ezell pump fakes. Goes deep down the near sideline. He's got his man, and it is dropped by Jacques Pride, a normally very reliable receiver for Ezell. I don't know. Maybe he was just too open on the play. Some of the, the most difficult passes to complete, as well as catch, are the ones that you're supposed to, where you are wide open. Beautiful thrown ball this time. Great protection by the offensive line. You follow does a little twist on the inside. Offensive line does a great job of picking it up. Beautifully read, just right off the numbers. Mm. You know, in the second the secondary bites on the pump fake, but when you drop eight, nobody should be behind you. Boy, what a missed opportunity. Could have been six on that play for Athens. Instead, he's a punt from his goal line. What a what a turn of events there takes an Athens roll, but it will still be a first and 10 for you fall on the Athens side of the 50 yard line. You know, guys, you talk about this veer offense for you fall on. Some people think, you know, with that traditional type of offense, a very conservative offense. Well, last week against UMS Wright, 
had very few first downs in that game. Three long touchdown runs of over 50 yards. Two of them by that young man, Jarrell Jernigan. Well, it's just amazing. Everything goes in cycles. Everybody's gotten into the passing offenses, but your traditional smash mouth football can catch you all in your heels if you don't see it a lot. Teams used to see it every week, but not these days. That made that time by William Me for Athens on the follow ball carry on a short gain on first down. And for the first time this game, you see the Athens defense jump into a four-man front. You know, that's what you try to do with the Veer offense because, again, if you're running the true Veer where you're reading the tackle or you're reading the first man outside the tackle, the more looks you can give the offense, the more difficult it makes for them to get in any type of rhythm. Second down and eight. Final play of the first quarter. Jernigan. Runs the option to the left, gets a good block on the corner. He's free inside the 30. And he will be shoved out of bounds by Athens' Jeremy Stinnett. But a huge pickup for Ufala as that will indeed be the final play of the first quarter. You know, and Tyler talked about assignment football right there. Ming had the quarterback. Jernigan, Jernigan was able to get outside of him, and everyone else had their assignment covered, but he's down the sideline for a huge game for the Tigers. Well, just really quickly, Chris Wilson doing a great job out there at the wide receiver position for you fall of stall block. All right, we'll step aside for a break into the first quarter. 5A title game, Athens leading 7-0. Back to Legion Field in just a moment. The 10th anniversary of the Super Six. Marquee event in the calendar year for the Alabama High School Athletic Association. And we resume now with the 5A state championship game. Second quarter, Athens leading. Coach Clay gets his team seven to nothing as we begin the quarter, but Ufala is once again for the second consecutive possession deep in Athens territory. On first down, Jernigan. Football came loose. The fullback wanted it. The quarterback wanted to pull it out, and it wound up in the arms of Athens Robert Brown. You know, again, we talked about them getting a different look at the option. 
that really affects sometimes how you, uh, what your read is. If there are four down linemen, your read is different than if there's three down linemen. And the quarterback and the fullback have to be in sync or it, the ball ends up on the ground. And the defensive line just doing a great job. There's really nowhere to go, nowhere to read. Jernigan not sure if he needs to pull it because his man, the man he's reading, actually is stepping out. He delivers the ball, ball's on the ground. Turnover is already playing a big part in this football game, and this pass intended for Pride, and it's a completion. Boy, Pride had to scoot that one up off the artificial surface. That was very close, a 17-yard pass play. And you know, no one's excited or more wanted the ball thrown to it more than Pride after that previous play. You're only as good as your last play. Pride doing a nice job, nice concentration, going and digging that off the turf. Whoa. No red flags coming out of the coach's socks <laughs> here tonight. <right. laughs> Drop the one right in your arms and scoop that one up off the turf. He's in all kind of trouble. Boy, look at the scrambling ability. Somehow gets the pass away and completes it again. This time to number 28, DeWan Tisdale, the senior. Tackle made by Desmond Thomas. And several times in this game, Ezell has forced the issue by escaping the rush. And if you look at the Ufala defense right now, you can tell Tyler, they're a little tired. They're tired of chasing Ezell and tired of chasing receivers around the, uh, around the secondary. 15-yard pass play. Here's Ezell again. Gets it away, connects with Justin Brown. And Brown is taken off his feet by Damian Wilson after a game of about five to the 39. And it's really just all about confidence. Athens is definitely getting in a rhythm right here. As you see them just roll the pocket. Once again, as we talked about, defense is giving different looks. Offenses do the same thing. Anything to help out their offensive linemen, move the ball around the field, give as many diff different looks as they can. Very intense coach Creasy. Here is Ezell. Short gain right up the middle. Pick up of maybe two yards, going to set up a third down. Xavier Cruz making the stop that time for you follow. Athens has been very efficient on third down so far in the game. A third down and a long two coming up here. Except when they got down inside the red zone. They've stayed in the shotgun, stayed in the spread, and they still do here on third and short. Play clock winding down, and to save a five-yard penalty here, Athens will call their first time out of the half before they snap it here on third and short. A couple of teams making their first Super 6 appearance in school history. A good one so far in the first half. Athens with the advantage. For about four cents, you can watch the entire race on TV from start to finish. Electricity, still a great value. Go for fun. Go for learning. Go for challenge. Go for launch. Space Camp's 25th anniversary celebration is coming to Huntsville Summer 2007, including special events, activities, and more. Space Camp's 25th anniversary. Two great camp experiences. Space Camp and Aviation Challenge. Register at spacecamp.com today and go for launch. I want everything free with my checking. Online bill pay, check card. Just let me write all the checks I need for free. No minimum balance. I want CD rate bonuses. I want everything free with my checking. Everything. At AmSouth, we listen. You get it all. Our positively free or 50 plus free checking and something you didn't ask for. Cash back with check card rewards. Cash back? I love it. Now you're talking. Now that's my kind of free. AmSouth's free checking. It's your kind of free. Dreamland Barbecue first opened back in 1958 in the deep south, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, by Big Daddy John Bishop. He used to say ain't nothing like him nowhere about his barbecue ribs and his customers. You see, over the years, lots of celebrities, pro athletes, and some Hollywood folks have been to Dreamland. But to Big Daddy and all the folks cooking and smiling at Dreamland, everyone who comes in is treated like a celebrity. 
So come on, see for yourself why we say Dreamland Barbecue. Ain't nothing like them nowhere. Did you know it costs less than 25 cents to run a load of dishes? Electricity, still a great value. And a good look at some of the Golden Eagle fans making the journey down from Athens to Birmingham. So far, so good for their team. They need to convert here on third and two. Ezel, nice fake, keeps it himself, finds a lane inside, and gets just enough for the first down. You follow Terrence Thomas, once again, this leading tackler for the Tigers coming up with a stop. Great job right here. Good call. What they're going to do, they're going to start misdirection this way. They're going to get the defense going here, and Ezel will fake it and then come back. Picks First up, down. Picks up a big one for the Eagles. At the 27, Ezel. Boy, the pressure gets there in a hurry. Look at the ability. Ezel inside the 20. Coming up hard to make the stop, Desmond Thomas. But what an outstanding play. And, you know, Tyler, we talked about this young man being the career leader in all-purpose yards in the state. And I think I've, I've seen enough to understand why he's been able to accumulate those kind of numbers. So elusive in the pocket. Does a great job. One thing you would like to see Azel do, watch. He, he was kind of holding the ball out there. You see right there. That could cause problems when you start getting arms, getting around uh, the football and everything. So you want to see him tuck that up there. Wow, he is very elusive. Very, Michael this. I thought you were going to brag on <laughs> yeah. me and say you look like me, but I knew that wasn't the case. Hey, great job, though, by Desmond Thomas. He saved the touchdown because if Ezell gets by him, he walks into the end zone. Great open field tackle. No, Tyler, I knew that you, you put the ball away, so I knew that couldn't be <laughs> You never carried it like a local. Let me tell you how smart Ezell is also. He goes right to the marker. He just ran 30 yards. He's tired. <laughs> he wanted the chains to come out and give him an opportunity to rest. As goes Ezel, so goes this Athens offense. You know, this Athens team, again, we talked about the high expectations in the open. At one time this season, they were ranked as high as number two. Again, stumbling kind of late in the season, losing three of their last five games. But they regained the momentum in the playoffs, and they've got the momentum here in the first half of this football game. Second down and short. Interesting call here. They'll just... And Ezell take off with it right back up the middle. Conservative play call, but it does net a first down inside the 15-yard line. And Williams, the back, the lone back, just leaves Ezell up through the gut, picks up the first down. Again, this you follow defense is kind of back on its heels right now. Well, you're starting to see a lot more misdirection. Moving the pocket around, misdirection at the line of scrimmage. And, and once again, it's giving you follow a lot of different looks. First down inside the 15. Oh, he's out. He is in control of this offense. Gets it out of there and completes it. Nice spin move after the catch by Jacquez Pride. He is near another first down. Sotero Hardy knocking him out of bounds after an eight-yard pickup. And defensively, the last thing that you want to see is mass substitutions coming on. And Athens is putting in what you would consider their jumbo package when you've got big Carlos Jones coming back in, the man that scored the touchdown earlier for the Eagles. Second down and two. Athens can get a first down at the four. Here's the give to the big fullback. Carlos Jones, who had the touchdown in the first quarter, not much here. Great job by that defensive front of Eufaula. And Athens goes too tight there. The Eufaula defense packs it in. You know, right here is always a good time for a little boot, a little play action, and a dump pass to one of those tight ends out there. This is also a time where the coaching staff knows what they're going to do on these next two plays. Are they going to go for it on fourth down, or are they not? A lot of it depends on the play call. Well, they're two of three on third downs. Here's the pitch, and they're going to have to make that decision because great penetration by Damian Wilson upending the back behind the line of scrimmage. So it will be fourth down. But Wilson comes off the corner. He is uh, he's on the inside. He has outside contain covered by Dennis, the quarterback. So he comes hard when he sees the pitch and makes the big play to bring up fourth down. 
But like Tyler said, this Athens team, they know right away what they're going to do, and they know their play call. No hesitation on their part. Fourth and about a yard. Here is the pitch to Williams. And he will not get there. Outstanding play. And again, Desmond Thomas, he's having a big first half for this Ufala defense. Try to run wide on this defense, and uh, it is tough. Great job by Thomas coming off the edge. He fights through the blocker, comes up, and makes the play. Assisted there. First person to get there was Terrence Mahoney, the linebacker. And then Thomas comes up and finish this the job. Potentially a, a, a pivotal point in this football game also. I know just the second quarter here, Athens with an opportunity to go up 10 nothing, 14 to nothing. You fall into a great job stopping them. Athens really controlling this first half, especially in terms of time of possession, but yet only seven points to show for it, but a nice defensive play here. A sea of black jerseys converging on the Ufala quarterback, Jarrell Jernigan. Now we go back to that open field tackle that uh, Thomas made on Ezel. If he misses, if he walks in, it is 14 points, but he makes that great play and allows Ufala to keep Athens from getting another score. Second down and nine. That's the Tigers scrimmage from their own 10. Delayed handoff to the tail of the eye. That is Williams. And Williams in the open field. He's got a chance to go. One man to beat, and Clyde will catch him at the 34-yard line. And boy, we talked about the big playability of this Ufala offense. Again, three 50-plus yard touchdown runs in the game last week against UMS Wright. A big one here, but a flag on the play. Yeah, we saw this very early on. Tyler talked about it earlier. The wide receivers out there blocking, and it really didn't affect the play. It had no effect on the play because the running back never got out that wide, but it was a call by the official. It was a correct call by the official, and this one is coming back. And that's a big blow to this Tiger offense who had themselves in great field position with that run. It's a tough call. And in, in the defense of the Widers, you, you never know where the running back's going to go. You don't know if your block is pivotal. And Holding on the offense will penalize half the distance in spite of the foul. It'll be second down. The ironic thing is, holding occurs on every play. The difference between getting called and not called is if the guy you're holding pulls away from you and then all of a sudden you are exposed. If you can keep it in tight, it won't get called. You know, Tyler, especially on the wide receivers, if they're in the frame, you know, they can get away with just about anything, but when that hand slips outside and gets on the outside of the shoulder pad, and you see that cloth stretch, that official's going to throw the flag. What a net effect of 56 yards, bringing it all the way back to the four-yard line. Second down and 15. Jernigan, his pass is complete. Great fingertip grab by Upshaw, and Upshaw takes it all the way out across the 35-yard line. And DeJuan Tisdale making the tackle. Boy, what a great fingertip grab on a 31-yard pass play. Well, and what happens is, is you've got this linebacker out here that's supposed to cover the tight end. He sees the action in the backfield, steps up, tight end is free. The linebacker never steps over. It's great play calling. Good yardage after the catch as well. Little room to operate with now for the Tigers. First down and 10. Here's Parker, the fullback, and he just pushes the pile forward for a gain of five. Parker's a big man, 5'9", over 200 pounds, but he runs a lot bigger than that. Well, in an option attack, you have to be able to run the, full, the fullback. You have to, to control those linebackers in the middle of the field, the safeties, make them honor the fullback always. Otherwise, you won't be productive. And this time, well, Athens is getting good penetration at time on the quarterback fullback exchange. Disrupted by the penetration by the Golden Eagle defense. It'll be third down and five. You know, I think that Jernigan wanted to pull that ball, kind of what happened on the turnover down when they were deep in Athens territory. And the fullback and the quarterback are not in sync right now with the read. 
another thing. You, you have to have some push at the offensive line. If, if your linemen get blown up in the backfield, then the play is, is disrupted from the beginning. So big third down here for you follow. And they get Athens to jump unless there was movement on the offensive front. I think they're going to pick this one up easy, hard count, and, and got several of the defensive linemen of the Eagles to jump. Big Maurice Ratliff, the senior, getting into the neutral zone. Easiest five yards you'll ever make. Oh. Offsides on the defense. It'll be a five-yard penalty, results in a first down. You know, a lot of teams will go on one all the time. They'll go on one the entire game, and then they have a play where they call freeze, and they'll go up and call the cadence. And that defense is so used to going on one, going on one, and they get the easy offsides and pick up the first down. Jeremy again. Where you going? Versus this field, lobs it up high, and it is caught by Williams. The tailback coming out of the backfield gets it across midfield. Todd Pepper on the tackle that time after a gain of about five yards. Great play by Pepper. Everything was going the other way, coming from this secondary position. He saw the back slip out, saw William slip out to sit up the screen. Pepper comes all the way across the field to make the play. Very minimal gain for the Tigers. Look at the total offense so far in the game. Athens, again, a two-to-one advantage over Eufaula. Also an advantage in the turnover department. Eufaula's turned it over twice. Athens once. Second down and five. And Jernigan keeps it himself. Well, it's hard for me to tell who had the football that time. Jeremy Stinnett figured out who had the football and stopped Jernigan at the 40-yard line. But that's a pickup of 10 and a Eufaula first down. Tyler, for the first time, we see the outside here off the tackles, off the outside hip of the tackle instead of the guard. And that gave him a different read. Jordan is able to slip out there. There's just so many different ways that you can attack with the option. Running it to the tight end, running it to an open end. So many different ways. And a good productive offense knows how to take advantage of what the defense is giving them. First and 10. A little reverse pitch here. Backside staying at home. And Chris Wilson gets what he can, which is barely back to the line of scrimmage. Outstanding job on the outside that time by Todd Pepper staying at home, keeping containment, forcing the play back inside. And again, Pepper did not make the tackle, but he came up and turned the runner back in to all those black jerseys. Because when Pepper stops right here, the running has to come back, and there's nothing but black jerseys all the way across. You know, Coach Parisi talked about last week, guys, that how important it was going to be to stay at home against this Ufala offense. And you can tell they're well coached coming into this game, an offense they haven't seen all year. And we know we've documented the challenges that can be in this day and age, a flag before the snap. Substitution infraction on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty. Second down. And again, they broke the huddle with 12 people. You know, that used to be common practice. Yeah, they'd have 13, 14 people in the huddle break it. You don't know what group is uh, in the ball game, and so you can't make your defense in substitutions. And, you know, obviously from a defensive standpoint, I think that's a great, that was a great rule change. Tyler, you probably weren't too fond of that when it happened. <laughs> well, you just do it on the sideline now. That's why you see so many teams huddling on the sideline. But everything is based on personnel. Not formations, but personnel. Second down and 13. Jernigan put a play action pass attempt here. Then I have to tuck it and run it. Gets it inside the 40. Takes a shot out of bounds. No flag on the play. Hustling over to make the stop. Todd Pepper for Athens. You know, that was not a vicious hit out of bounds right there. But guys, I'll tell you something. If that call, if that play happens on the Ufala sideline, trust me, there's a flag coming because you've got about nine coaches and 30 players jumping up and down. But it happens on the Athens sideline, so you're not going to get the call. Again, it wasn't a vicious hit. It was just part of a continuation of play. But again, that's one of those, if it's on my side, it's a good call. If it's on your side, it's a bad call. 
Third down, eight yards to go for you fall. Down near the two-minute mark of the first half. Jernigan rolling out. Gets the pass away. Nice grab at the 25-yard line by Cruz. Good yard run after the catch inside the 10-yard line. Jeremy Stinnett along with Dewan Tisdale making the stop, but a huge 28-yard pass play on a third and long. And we talked about contain. Keep that quarterback inside, but we lose contain here. Jernigan gets outside. He's got a clear view of to pass the ball in, and he sees his receiver Cruz out there and delivers it to him. He makes a great move and gets down inside the 10-yard line. And it did look like Antonio Long was going to have an opportunity to pick that playoff as he comes off of the route on the outside and comes in. But as you said, just a great play that time by Cruz. Big opportunity here for the Tigers, a first and goal inside the 10. Jernigan gives it to Parker. Actually, that's Xavier Cruz in there at fullback. He is taken down by Antonio Long, but a pretty good gain on first and goal to get it inside the five. They, they've been so used to seeing the Veer going to the same side that way. That time they started to the left side, came back to the right with a little trap action with the guard. Center blocks to the weak side, guard comes back, kicks out the tackle. Nice game for the Tigers. On a second and goal, Jernigan leaves it with the fullback again and cruises in for the touchdown as Athens gets on the board late here in the first half. What like just to be the same play to the other side. Starts to the right, guard blocks back. And if you'll watch this guard, he'll come here. He steps up. He walks into the end zone. Doesn't get touched until he gets there. Well-designed play. Well, the down before went from left to right on the touchdown from right to left. Oh, the step. And the extra point attempt go, 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 go. is right through there by Clayton Slade. So we are now tied 7-7. Seven to seven. Very late in the first half as you fall up. Comes up with a huge drive to pull even in the 5A state championship game from Legion Field. Well, very late first half, and we are right back where we started, all even up at seven apiece. You fall in Athens in the 5A state championship game and on the Friday night edition of the Super Six. 
And there's a look at the scoring drive. Look at this 96 yards 14 plays almost six and a half minutes and that young man Xavier Cruz with a three yard touchdown run to pull Athens and you fall to a seven to seven tie. Let's check in with Kevin Hensley down on the sideline with this America's first sideline report. Thanks, Mickey. I'm now joined by Brad Cheeto and Jack Moore, both with Encore Sports Medicine, the group that is taking care of all these athletes this week here at the Super Six. And Brad, we'll start with you. Obviously, Encore is proud to be associated with the Super Six. And uh, I've seen so many of your jackets down here. Just about how many guys do you have here taking care of the athletes? Uh, I think we've got about eight here today. Um, I mean, uh, you know, we've got a couple doctors like Dr. Moore from Sports Med. Um, I mean, it's just great to be down here with the uh, Alabama High School Association, Wanda, and uh, everybody, and we just love doing it. Well, we'll turn to Jack Moore. Jack, what kind of also uh, extra elements does this cold add to you guys' job out here keeping these guys healthy? Well, of course, the joints get a lot more stiff during this time, but the kids, they're doing a good job of keeping them warm on the sideline and flex the foot flexibility is an issue, but they're the, the team and coaches have been prepared for that. So they've dealt with some cold games already this year. You guys are doing a great job, and, you know, my knee's been kind of stiffening up, walking up and down the sidelines. I may have you guys look at that here shortly. Back up to you guys. I can relate, Kevin. A little squib kick here by Ufala, taken by an Athens up, man. Nice return by Antonio Long. You know, speaking of the weather, Tyler, I got to tell you, you know, your compatriot, Andrew Zhao, was with us last night on a very cold <laughs> night. And, you know, he had the Alabama toboggan on, so what kind of fashion statement are you going to give us tonight? I'm not, but I am going to tell you a story about Andrew Zhao. When he first got to Alabama, if it ever do dropped below 70 degrees, he, he had he had cold weather outfit out there practicing, toboggans on, gloves, hands down his pants, just try, doing anything he could to stay warm. Just like a Florida boy, yeah. huh? Rob Ezell has handled the cold very well so far tonight. You saw his numbers, 10 of 12. And he's escaped some pressure tonight, but he couldn't get away from Xavier Cruz that time as Cruz got just enough of Ezell to knock him down for a huge loss. This you follow defense, just like their offense, they're known for speed. You're not going to run uh, east and west on them. And Cruz comes up and makes a great play there to sack Ezell. Second down and very long. He's there. Fires away to the outside. He's got Pride. And Pride taken down quickly by Chris Wilson. Had Wilson not got to him, Pride might still be running. Zone coverage just kind of giving them the soft underthrow because with only 28 seconds to go in the half, you just don't want to give up anything deep, anything cheap. Well, Athens takes their second time out of the half, and why not? Can't take them with you as the Golden Eagles hope to get it down and possibly have a shot at a field goal here before halftime. Well, it is the holiday season and the ideal gift for you high school football fans. How about all six state championship games from this year's Super Six? You can purchase those in bulk at a discount price. Just simply write to P.O. Box 360243, Birmingham, Alabama 35236. Or you can log on to our website and purchase Give us your order online at ALHSTV.com. You can purchase all six games in a package, or you can purchase individual games from the 2006 Super Six. And I tell you, this is definitely a year to do it with the 10th anniversary of the Super Six. It's hard to believe that it's been 10 years since uh, the Super Six brought to Legion Field here in Birmingham by the Alabama High School Athletic Association. And Boji, I would say, from all accounts, it's been a huge success. Their success was kind of strange. I've been involved in every one of these things, either as a college coach here recruiting or, or working in some type of facet, whether it be uh, with organizational with Chris Brown uh, and the Colonnade Group. Uh, now he uh, has his own company, 501 Group, or broadcasting. And it's been uh, really 10 enjoyable years. He's out. Uh, gets rid of it and completes the pass to number 12. That is Vincent Azzarello, his second reception of the night. So first down at the Ufala 38. Clock stop to move the chains. Ezell gets outside here, brace the contain, and it's a great block here that sits him up. Pharrell Williams, the tailback for Athens, limping off the field after that play. Ezell. Gets rid of the ball, and it's picked off by Ufala's Kendrick Dennis at the 20-yard line. So this Athens drive will 
come to an end with eight seconds left here in the first half. Big, I think he uh, dropped it as oh. he was going down to the ground and incomplete, but uh, giving Athens one last chance to hit one toward the end zone. And just about to make the comment, this is a time where you, you, you want to go after it, but you got to be safe and careful at the same time. You don't want to hurt yourself and give a you fall of your Athens an opportunity to run it all the way back. Athens with another shot, second and ten. Again, only eight seconds left. The Golden Eagles do have one more timeout. He's uh, steps up in the pocket, gets it away downfield, and it is caught at the six-yard line. Two seconds. They get the timeout. Outstanding catch by Dewan Tisdale. And how about the throw from that young man, Rob Ezek? Just an incredible play right here. Catching you fall, looks like a cover too, so both safeties are going to split and go wide. Leaves the middle of the field wide open. And as you can see, just steps up, deliver the ball right down. Great job of awareness of recognizing how much time is left on the clock. A lot of times when you get that cover too, like you said, Tyler, you're going to split the safeties and hit the seam. And I tell you, a lot of people have gone to that, but to me, there's nothing better for to keep the deep pass from being thrown and good old cover three, especially late in the first half. I think, you know, that's what you have to be and get that safety in the middle, get your corners to drop, make them throw it underneath because they've given Athens a great chance to go for the field goal here. And you would have to assume that they're going to try to kick this uh, instead of taking a shot into the end zone. Well, while we have a stoppage in play, remind you coming up at halftime, you don't want to miss this. John Holder will rejoin us down on the field with more analysis of the first half from UMS right head coach Terry Curtis. Also, two very special guests will join us as well. Alabama High School Athletic Association Executive Director Dan Washburn and incoming Executive Director Steve Savarese, who just this week was announced as uh, the successor to Dan Washburn. We will have both the current executive director and the incoming director joining us down on the field at halftime and Athens will bring out the field goal unit. Matt Jackson will be attempting a 23 yarder. Watching Jackson in warm up he has more than ample leg and this is straight on. Big rush from you fall but Jackson drills it. So as time expires Matt Jackson puts Athens back on top at halftime as they head to the locker room with a 10 to 7 lead over top rank you fall up here in this 5A state championship game. But you know as Tyler said when he kicked that ball from up here it sounded like he was kicking a ton of lead. <laughs> it was it was the hardest hit of the night. Well, both teams heading into the locker room. Very well played first half by both of these teams. Both teams very well coached. Two different styles of football. Anybody's game here at halftime in the 5A state championship game. Once again, stay with us. Big halftime show coming up from down on the field. And we will send it down to Kevin Hensley now, standing by with Coach Priest. Coach, uh, after you follow put together what was a very good, good scoring drive, what, how much momentum does that give you guys back right there to take it down the field and get through? Of, well, that gives us a lot of momentum. You know, that's kind of our game. You know, we're used to doing that. We've been in that exact situation several times. You know, I'm disappointed we didn't score a touchdown. You certainly moved the ball well on them in the first half. And uh, maybe would you like to go back and have that fourth and one over again? You're talking about the one where we didn't kick the oh, yeah, yeah. Shoot, every time you do something that doesn't work, you want to do it again. We should have kicked it. We didn't. I uh, hope it doesn't come back to haunt us. But, you know, that's a, that's, that's part of the game. you got to make decisions. We had the momentum. We knew a 14-point lead would be better than a 10-point lead. It just didn't work out that way. Coach, good luck the second half. Thank you. All right, thanks, Kevin. The third seed from Region 8 in North Alabama leading the Region 2 champions, the Ufala Tigers, from the southern end of the state. At halftime, 10 to 7. HSTV's coverage of the 10th anniversary edition of the Super Six continues in just a moment. Today, on a panoramic parcel overlooking Mobile Delta, safely set 50 feet above sea level, the first tower of an exciting new resort community is taking shape. The Blakely at Cypress Point. A mere 10 minutes from downtown Mobile, yet in every sense a world away. 
For more information or to make a reservation, give us a call or join us online. The Blakely at Cypress Point, the best of both worlds and only 10 minutes between them. I'm David Adcock, President and CEO. I've been with America's First 33 years. America's First is not about delivering profits, but delivering value and service to our members. All people living, working, and worshiping in our seven county area surrounding Birmingham are now eligible to join America's First. Join today and you'll see what it's like to do business with a financial organization that has your best interest at heart. America's First Federal Credit Union. Now you can join. Yesterday is spoken for. But the future is your own to dream and plan for. At Alpha, we're in the business of tomorrows, making them safer, smarter, more comfortable. And it starts with the conversation. Let's talk about tomorrow. More sports. More teams. More winners. Encore Sports Medicine. Legion Field in Birmingham, the site of the Class 5A state championship game, a part of a long weekend of six state championships here at the Alabama High School Athletic Association Super 6 Championships. This 5A title game, a tight one. The Athens Golden Eagles leading the number one ranked Bufala Tigers by a score of 10 to 7. John Holder here with you at Legion Field, and we are over halfway through the Super 6. We've got a couple of games coming up tomorrow, of course, the second half of this game. We already have decided three state champions here at the Super 6 yesterday and also today. And as we look at Class 2A, they kicked off the Super 6 yesterday and a defensive struggle between Woodland and Leroy. Woodland getting their only points early in the game on a halfback pass, Trey Strain. But then turnovers, a lot of turnovers on the side of Woodland. Five turnovers to be exact. This one turned into a 90-yard return for a touchdown by Leroy. That brought the score back to within 7-6 to six at halftime. And then in the second half, more turnovers. Colton McCain, fine quarterback from Woodland with an unfortunate night with four interceptions, part of five turnovers for Woodland. But Ronald Bracey was the story offensively for Leroy in the second half. He had a big night, including what turned out to be the game-winning touchdown for Leroy as they win the state championship game in Class 2A over Woodland by a score of 12 to 7 and that was yesterday here at Legion Field. You're seeing a lot of those interceptions and turnovers committed by the Woodland Bobcats as they failed yesterday. There's one more interception. The Leroy Bears, their second state championship in school history, two in the last three years. Both of those coming over Woodland. And last night, an offensive shootout between Thomasville and Guntersville. Basically a missed extra point. The only difference in this game. And look at Trevor Diamond here with a nice catch and run for Guntersville. Chaz Rogers with three touchdown passes last night for Guntersville. The ground game working for Thomasville. A AHSAA Super 6 record record of 421 yards rushing for Thomasville but the big pass plays again we see Diamond for Gunnersville with another big pass play from Chaz Rogers and that was really the difference in the game as they had the passing game working mightily fine over 250 yards passing from Rogers last night as we said three touchdown passes and of course Thomasville the ground game Bringing it to you within a touchdown here. As a matter of fact, this is the quarterback, Jake Overstreet, with a nice scramble for a touchdown. But in the end, it was Thomasville. You're going to see the game. Well, I should say Gunnersville with a game-winning touchdown run from Josh Gunther. And then a missed field goal late in the game. And that proved pretty much to be the difference as Thomasville lost to Gunnersville 28-27. One last chance for Thomasville. An interception by Gunnersville to wrap it up as Gunnersville wins their first ever state championship in school history with a 28-27 win over the Thomasville Tigers. Back at Legion Field in Birmingham, joined by UMS Wright Prep coach 
Terry Curtis joins us up from Mobile tonight. His football team moving up from 4A last year where they won the 4A state championship to 5A this season. Last week they were in the semifinals, lost to this Ufala team we're seeing here tonight, 28-6. Coach Curtis, this is a very well-played football game. We've seen some big plays, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the size versus speed aspect. It's been a lot of uh, big linemen out there that we're seeing for this Athens team and a lot of speed on the side of Ufala. Well, it's kind of like we talked about before, John. I thought they both got into the game really well. We had some early turnover by both sides, but it didn't hurt them, and, and field position played a big part in it, but it is. It's been their speed. I think Athens and Coach Creasy and his group have done a great job of, of holding down the quarterback who's the key to, to Ufala. And and for a while there, Ufala was doing a fine job of getting pressure on Ezel and, and keeping them from getting in their rhythm and all, but uh, I think the, the field goal right before the half was big just like uh, uh, Coach Creasy said that was big to get the big play right there and, and get that uh, get those three points. You and I talked in the pregame about the fact that neither one of these teams have been to the Super Six before. First time to play here at Legion Field. Did you see any butterflies there for these teams in the first half? Well, I, uh, you sort of did to start with. You know, uh, you follow came out with a pass on the, the first play, which wasn't their game, and threw the interception after the the fumble by uh, Athens. And but I saw, I, I just thought they got into it really well. The both teams are well coached and and doing a great job of what they do best. And I think you, I think we're going to have a great second half. You follow got a lot of conference going into that was a good big drive they had right there before the half they found a few things they could do and and I think uh, there's going to be some more score in the second half. Coach Curtis, thank you for joining us. And we have got a great second half coming up. Before we get there, though, we've got two special guests coming up as the Super 6 continues on HSTV. When I was making a decision about college, I had plenty of choices. Big universities, smaller schools. I don't think I've ever been as impressed as I was the first time I visited the University of West Alabama. Everywhere I looked, I found quality programs led by faculty who could be anywhere but love it here, and students that love the UWA experience. There's a sense of warmth, of family. It just feels right. There's something about this place. Since 1938, there's been only one place where you can order the freshest Gulf seafood around, and that's Winsell's Oyster House. You know Winsell's is where you can order our famous Gulf oysters, fried, stewed, or nude every day. Fresh seafood, gumbo, crab claw, stuffed flounder, whew, it just doesn't get much better. And the list goes on and on. And with four great locations, you can treat your seafood craving from almost anywhere. Winsell's Oyster House is proud to be a long-standing tradition for fresh Gulf seafood and a proud fixture on the Gulf Coast for 68 years. This is unbelievable. It's a lifetime. God. We'll make it right, John. For the past 20 years, I've been their insurance agent. But not today. Life comes at you fast. Nobody understands better than nationwide insurance. Huntsville has a lot to offer to host any sporting event. An initiative of Mayor Loretta Spencer. The Huntsville Sports Commission since 2000 has recruited and hosted premier national, regional, and state events representing 14 different sports. With hardworking volunteers, top-notch facilities, wonderful attractions, and a wide variety of restaurants and hotels, Huntsville, Alabama has everything to make any tournament an outstanding event. Check us out online at HuntsvilleSports.org. Halftime of the Class 5A title game here at the Alabama High School Athletic Association Super 6 at Legion Field in Birmingham. Athens leading number one ranked Ufala by a score of 10 to 7. John Holder back with you at Legion Field. Halftime festivities continue and uh, a big announcement this week concerning the future of high school athletics in the state of Alabama and the Alabama High School Athletic Association. Of course, many of you may know that Executive Director Dan Washburn uh, announcing his retirement early this year. That will take effect uh, next summer his replacement announced this week, and that replacement, the new executive director taking over at the end of uh, next July, will be Coach Steve Savarese, uh, current athletic director and head football coach at McGill 2 in high school in Mobile. And these men are our guests uh, here at halftime. Gentlemen, uh, welcome in and welcome into the Super Six. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Coach Washburn, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, just maybe looking back and looking at uh, the years that you spent, uh, your career at the Alabama High School Athletic Association. A lot of uh, good things happen under your leadership. Talk about some of the things that are maybe special to you. Uh, John, uh, since uh, 
1991, uh, January 1991, when uh, uh, Mr. Herman L. Bubba Scott retired with, uh, from a long uh, uh, career, uh, uh, a legend in high school, and they did so much for the high schools in the state and, and really carried us into uh, uh, the 90s and uh, took over in 91 on, on January 1st. and. Able to, in uh, 19 uh, early 90s to develop the basketball state finals right here in Birmingham at Birmingham Jefferson Civic Center, and we're awfully proud that that has been a tremendous success. Right after that, in 94, 95, we began to talk about the uh, Super Six event right here at Legion Field. That became a reality, and from that, it just catapulted into. Uh, all the state finals are going to a neutral side and the baseball and softball in Montgomery, the volleyball and wrestling over at Pelham Civic Center in Pelham, Alabama, and just uh, cities all across the uh, All-Star Sports Week in uh, Huntsville, the uh, uh, All-Star Classic in Mobile, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, All-Star Classic, the Hall of Fame that Mr. Scott started right before he left. and turned over to us we're able to institute that and now a brand new building in in uh, Montgomery for the Alabama High School Athletic Association should carry uh, the association and its schools into many years to come and be a, a great service to them it's just been a uh, I tell you I, I could have never dreamed of, of having a career like this and and now coming to the end of it looking back it is it's really been uh, uh, very exciting and uh, a most fruitful uh, time of the last 16, 17 years. We, uh, Charlene and I have been involved in this. It's just a, a, a wonderful experience. Coach Savarisa, what excites you? I know there's a lot of things to excite you. Uh, what excites you about taking over and leading the Alabama High School Athletic Association? Whatever Mr. Washington tells me excites me is what excites me right now. I'm a designee right now, and I, like being a trainee. And uh, it's exciting to continue a lot of things that Coach Scott and Coach Washburn have started in this state and done. You know, this event that we're here right now wouldn't have happened without Mr. Washburn. You know, and I was blessed to have the fortune to play in this game three times. And I'm so appreciative as a coach because of what this game means to all the players in your community and your your school and it wouldn't have happened without Mr. Washburn and the Central Board of Controls leadership and we're just you know there's everybody says well how are you gonna feel Mr. Washburn's footsteps well, you can't feel his shoes there's just no way possible you just try to continue on the path that he's made for us. Coach Savarisa the next uh, six or eight months something like that you're going to be following around kind of shadowing Coach Washburn here talk about the next six to eight months as you kind of follow him around learn from him uh, ready to step into his shoes next summer I'll probably be driving a lot you know what I mean I'll probably be driving in a car and uh, okay. no um, I'm just going to try to absorb everything I can from Mr. Washburn try to learn as much as I can from him and the central board and uh, you know Mr. Washburn is going to ease me into it and, and but I just, he'll teach me and I I've really enjoyed the time I've spent with him so far and I really look forward to the next six seven months and uh making a new friend and also uh, trying to be the best executive director I can be. Coach Washburn, uh, as we wrap things up here, talk about some of the challenges that he's going to have, maybe some of the things that uh, you see in the future that uh, he's going to be facing as director of the Alabama High School Athletic well, Association. Steve has hit on it. He, he, he's going to be the leader of the schools and leader of a central board of control is very interested in the association going forward. Steve brings a whole new perspective to the association. His knowledge and ability and, and technology will take the association to the next level. I promise you that. There's so many things like out there. We mentioned today an adaptive sports program, maybe a championship program for the handicap, those kind of things. And his leadership will take us so far, I think, in, in the educational realm that the association can be involved in. Uh, we talked about steroid education, but to getting back to character education and those things where the association has a direct influence on some 300, uh, 410 senior high schools and uh, 278 at junior high and middle schools. There's just so much to be done yet. Uh, we've just scratched the surface, and uh, Coach Steve Salvarese is a great man. He's a good man, and he's the guy to take us to the next level. Coach Washburn, thank you for your service. Coach Savarese, looking forward to a great tenure from you with the Alabama High School Athletic Association. Men, thank you for joining thank us here at the John, Super John. Six. Thank you for it. Dan Washburn and Steve Savarese, our guest at halftime. More of the Super Six, the second half, is next on HSTV.
And welcome back to Legion Field. Halftime wrapping up here in the 5A state championship game. Athens leading Eufaula at the break by a score of 10 to 7. Mickey Shadricks, Boji Wood, and Tyler Watts rejoining you now from the booth. And a very uh, great first half in this 5A state championship game. Very hard played game. And uh, Boji, we kind of expected to see two different styles of offense. And I think we're seeing both teams getting after it. Athens really seemed to be executing pretty well. Got that three point lead. He's uh, really come on strong and get the ball in the hands of his athletes, letting them make plays. And of course, he's an athlete himself. He's made a few of his own. Well, Tyler, you know, we talked about uh, Jernigan from Eufaula, kind of a little bit of a shaky start to the game, but he showed that athletic ability. He probably played a big factor in the second half. Yeah, absolutely. And then this offense that they have, as you can see, they're just one drive away from, from coming back and tying it up. So very interesting that they're, they're, they've come to be a big play team here tonight and we'll see if they can capitalize on that in the second half and they had a huge drive late in the first half let's check out the first half highlights from tonight's game and Boji again Rob Ezel really in command of this offense in the first half and here you see Williams taking the pass from Ezel going down to setting up their first score and you see big Carlos Jones bust in running over people to get their first score. And Ezell with a pump fake, throws deep to Joaquez Pride, and they could have gone up 14 to nothing there. And Tyler, here we see uh, Jernigan scrambling out of some pressure here and getting out of bounds. They really put together a key drive late in that first half. Absolutely, and it all started off with Kwame Johnson, the tight end for you, followed with a huge pickup, backed up down deep, got him out close to midfield, able to capitalize a few plays later. And then Matt Jackson with a 23-yard field goal late in the half, giving Athens that 10 to seven lead. Guys, you look at this, it's a pretty big disparity there. Rushing yardage, we knew that would favor Eufaula. Athens with the advantage in passing. Uh, turnovers, a, a factor in the game as well, Tyler. Yeah, traded turnovers early in the game. After that point, it looked like both, both teams kind of calmed down and got in more of a rhythm of what they've been playing all year long. Well, you follow coming into this game undefeated at 14 and 0, top ranked in the state. Athens giving them all they can handle here on a chilly December night, Legion Field. Let's go down to the field. Kevin Hensley standing by. Coach, your team finally got some offensive rhythm late in the second quarter, put together a nice scoring drive, and that certainly, I think, would help build your team a little bit of confidence right now. Well, first of all, defense did a great job stopping and gives the opportunity because we overcame some big penalties there and guys made some big plays. And, uh, you know, we pretty much stopped ourselves tonight. We just got to settle down, and I'm trying to tell the kids this is, just enjoy themselves and, and don't and focus in only on what's happening on the field, not, not all the other stuff. Talk about your defense. That big fourth and one stand in the red zone, I thought, was a real big turning point. It was. Well, you know, we just probably need to do a better job staying in our rush lanes, make sure our contained rushers will uh, keep Ezel in the pocket, and then our interior rushers have got to do a good job staying in their lane. He's a great quarterback, and he's able to see not only downfield, but he also sees what's coming at him, and that's, that's a tough combination. Coach, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Kevin. The warmers at work on the sideline here tonight. Another chilly evening here, the Super Six, but unlike last night, the wind not as big a factor, and that is that is a good thing for everyone involved, fans, players, and uh, us guys in the booth as well. <laughs> last night was probably the coldest I've ever been <laughs> broadcasting a football game. Here's the sad thing. I was in Ohio all day yesterday, looked at the weather channel. Temperatures here were the exact same as they were up there. Didn't get a brick coming south, did you? No, it did. Tomorrow, uh, once the day moves on a little bit, should be a pretty nice day considering the chilly weather so far for the uh, finale of the Super Six, the 1A championship game tomorrow. Cedar Bluff and Sweetwater, then the 6A championship game. Well, I think everyone's looking forward to that one. Hoover and Prattville from right here at Legion Field. But first things first, got another half of football in the 5A state championship game as Chris Wilson awaits the kick from Jackson as you fall and will get it first to begin the second half. Yeah, 56 degrees tomorrow. I guess we can wear shorts, can't we? <laughs> wonder if Andrew will have on his toboggan tomorrow. <laughs> As Tyler said, anything under 70, that's not good for Andrew. <laughs> a little squib kick, and you fall up, man, coming up and getting on it, Kendrick Dennis. Looked like that thing may have been headed out of bounds anyway, but a good heads-up play by Dennis, and you fall will have very good field position on their first possession of the half as Jarrell Jernigan comes out, 
to lead his team. And this young man, two long touchdown runs against UMS right last week. But all in all, guys, wouldn't you say that Athens has done a pretty good job keeping him in check? They have. And I've got to say, Coach Creasy and his staff must have picked up something because they will not kick the ball deep to you fall. They must have a lot of respect for the return team. Jernigan, counter option. He gets nothing. Boy, great job by Maurice Ratliff, the senior defensive lineman, coming down the line and busting up that play. Just a great job of pursuit. You see Ufala, a little counter action coming out here in the second half. As you can see, Ratliff just doing a great job of pursuing. And what they tried to do, they tried to bring the guard out on, on a counter trap and get the quarterback on the outside so he could option. It was not really a dive option. It's more of a pitch option. Good job by the Athens defense of blowing up the mesh point on the perimeter. Second down. Here's to give to Parker. And Parker is taken down low by Robert Brown of Athens, but not before he falls forward for a gain of about six yards. It'll set up a third down and four. And what he's looking at, he's looking at this tackle. He goes up, he's going to give the ball to the fullback, and that's all the veer option is. It's where you go, I'm going to give the ball going in another direction. So they're going to read those defensive linemen and the defensive ends. But again, Athens has probably got a few wrinkles that they're going to show in the second half that they did not show in the first half because you follow can't sit down and talk about it on the chalkboard in the locker room at halftime. Oh, a good power running by the fullback. Parker still driving his feet. Robert Brown had a hold of him and was just holding on for dear life as Parker doing what uh, a good fullback in this offense will do, and that is drive those legs and pick up a first down. Well, pushing the piles illegal, <laughs> but when your ball carrier yeah. is the one doing it, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Very important drive for this Ufala offense here to begin the second half. All coaches will tell you the first five minutes of the second half are key. And well, you know, they have seven points, and they've had great field position all night, but the only score they have came on a 97-yard drive. Jernigan, no one open, covers up and goes down. Once again, Maurice Ratliff there along with Carlos Jones, his teammate. Jernigan wanted Chris Wilson down the, the numbers there on the sideline. Just need another half second for the play to develop. That is one thing about the option attack. There's a lot of, a lot of great play actions that you that you can derive off of. A lot of play action. You start getting those linebackers to really suck up. You can take advantage of that. But it does take time, and any inside penetration will kill all play action. See that 10th anniversary logo on the back of the headgear here for this 2006 Super 6. Second down and nine. Jernigan makes the pitch to Williams, and he is taken out of bounds by Jacquez Pride at around the 41-yard line. Tyler talked in the first half. You've got a dive responsibility. You've got a quarterback responsibility. There's nobody on the pitch. And again, it's all about responsibility when you're defending the option. And all they're looking for is that one crease where you don't have a player there and that runner is off to the races whether it be the fullback the quarterback or the pitchback and, and Jernigan did a nice job one little hesitation towards the line of scrimmage is what allowed that defensive back to bite on him and allow him to pitch it out big third down play they go to the short side of the field and Jernigan is swarmed under back at the 42 yard line first man there William Mead you know, William Ming said there, I'll tell you what, I'll take the dive back and I'll take the quarterback. Now, that's the way you stop the option. And, and you really need to be seeing something when you're running the option to the short field because the sideline is the fourth defender. It's always going to come into play. There, there's two ways that you can stop the option. Either either contain everyone, have, have someone assigned to everyone, or simply string it out. Slow play the play, force it all the way to the sideline. And Athens forces a punt here as the drive stalls at the Athens 41. Here's the a fake, number 23, the up man. That's Terrence Thomas, and he's going to have the first down. So Coach Dan Clagus reaching down deep into his bag of tricks, the fake punt, and it gets his team a first down. 
heads up play by Ufala. What they do is they snap it to the up back, and they're going to bring the two uh, up backs around the block for the blocking, or for the uh, up back. He gets in, gets the first down. Boy, put an asterisk by that play as this game progresses. First and 10 at the 34. Parker. Short gain, he's wrapped up once again by the sophomore William Ming, 6'4", 235-pounder. Another, another neat thing, though, about the option is that, that play picked up four yards is exactly what they want. Three, four, four-yard gains is a first down all day long. But these coaches up in the booth are looking. They're seeing how Athens is playing this. Their next four, five, six calls down the line are going to come off the different looks that they've given and the way Athens has played the ball. Second down and six. Jernigan hands it off to Williams. Boy, there is William Ming again as he takes Williams down at the 28-yard line. So here is another third down play coming up. Third, they need about four. And that play is made because Todd Pepper comes in off the perimeter and turns that play back into pursuit right into where William Ming was coming. Ming was actually the backside defensive end trailing the play and the pursuit of the defense was able to be effective because of Pepper turning it back inside. You follow three of five on third down play so far in the football game. Jernigan gets to Parker, the fullback, and he is met immediately by big Alfred McCullough as he busts up that play for a very short gain, maybe a yard at most. Here's another fourth down. And on the, the second straight third down conversion, you follow once again has gone to the short field. So evidently they, they feel that they're seeing something. But as you can see right there, defensive tackle for Athens just doing a great job of blowing the play up. McCullough and Radcliffe getting lots of penetration in there. You can't fake it here. If you're going to go for it on fourth down, you got to line up and do it. Coach Creasy might be looking for the tight end pop right here. Let's see if they get that linebacker on that tight end this time. Athens crowd on their feet. Fourth down and four. Movement by the left tackle. Looked like they were going to try to draw him off sides. They drew their own man off sides. Steve Marlowe with the call. Ball start on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Now Coach Plagueis now looking at a fourth and nine back at the 33. You know, and here you can almost go for it because, you know, even if you don't make anything, you're looking at giving up 13 yards if you punt the ball into the end zone. And you follow. We'll take a timeout here to discuss their options here on fourth and nine. We'll come back, see what you follow does on fourth and nine, trailing Athens by three. For about four cents, you can watch the entire race on TV from start to finish. Electricity, still a great value. Go for fun. Go for learning. Go for challenge. Go for launch. Space Camp's 25th anniversary celebration is coming to Huntsville Summer 2007, including special events, activities, and more. Space Camp's 25th anniversary. Two great camp experiences, Space Camp and Aviation Challenge. Register at spacecamp.com today and go for launch. I want everything free with my checking. Online bill pay, check card. Just let me write all the checks I need for free. No minimum balance. I want CD rate bonuses. I want everything free with my checking. Everything. At AmSouth, we listen. You get it all. Our positively free or 50 plus free checking and something you didn't ask for. Cash back with check card rewards. Cash back? I love it. Now you're talking. Now that's my kind of free. AmSouth's free checking. It's your kind of free. Dreamland Barbecue first opened back in 1958 in the deep south, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. 
by Big Daddy John Bishop. He used to say ain't nothing like him nowhere about his barbecue ribs and his customers. You see, over the years, lots of celebrities, pro athletes, and some Hollywood folks have been to Dreamland. But to Big Daddy and all the folks cooking and smiling at Dreamland, everyone who comes in is treated like a celebrity. So come on, see for yourself why we say Dreamland Barbecue ain't nothing like him nowhere. For about a nickel, you can run your circular saw for 20 minutes. Electricity, still a great value. And a nice shot of the skyline of downtown Birmingham, Alabama. 5.58 left in our third quarter. Athens leading you fall at 10-7. Take this time to remind you, Sports Med Orthopedic Surgery and Spine Center of North Alabama. Proud to be team physicians for the Athens Golden Eagles. Sports Med has been the trusted choice in the community for the diagnosis and treatment of orthopedic conditions. Five locations across Northeast Alabama. Sports Med is the leader in servicing high school athletic programs like Athens High all across the Tennessee Valley. Fourth down. Jernigan rolling to his left, filling the heat. Stays alive, gets the ball away, and nobody home in the end zone. So this you fall a drive that eats up over half of the third quarter, stalls, and Athens takes over first and ten. And Jernigan got outside there, thought he might be able to put a little pressure on the defense, but the secondary stayed deep, played the receivers, and that one had no chance of being called. A little contact that time between Tisdale for Athens as well as Wilson for Ufala, but no flag coming out. You know, it's always those quarterbacks wanting those interference calls, I'm telling you. Got to give you guy an opportunity. <laughs> That's all we're asking for. <laughs> First and ten total yardage there you see. The Tigers also an advantage in yards per play, averaging just over eight yards a play. Athens with just over five yards a play. And First down pass incomplete. And I'll tell you, that was a tough drive there for you, Fallen, to take that ball, march it all the way down the field, lead up over half the third quarter, and come away with no points. You know, and all kidding aside on the contact there, you know, a lot of times you'll see the officials say, well, it was uncatchable. You know, even a defense, as myself, a defensive coach, I'd say, you know, well, yeah, but maybe if he hadn't had the contact there, the ball would have been catchable. He's out. Didn't have time to set up, so he takes off and uses his legs to his advantage. Taken out of bounds at the 41-yard line by Ufala's Sotero Harding. Uh, you know, and I, and I really do think, though, it, it, and up to this point in the game, the difference in this ball game has been Ezel's ability to move the pocket and pick up yardage, positive yardage, in those scrambling type of situations. He's not busting them for 40, 50 yard gains, but he's given his, his team an opportunity on third and short to convert third downs. And a chance here to convert on third and one. Ezel gets it up the middle. First down, Williams. Picks up first down yardage across the 45. Let's send it down to the field for an America's First Sideline Report with Kevin Hensley. Guys, and especially Tyler, I know you guys will, will admit that the quarterback has a lot of pressure on his position. Well, what if you're following the footsteps of a guy like Phillip Rivers here at the Athens program, who just so happens to now quarterback for the San Diego Chargers? But you look at his record, you talked about it. He is the leading all-time yardage gainer in Alabama high school history with plays like this right here. That's exactly right, Kevin. Didn't complete the pass, but boy, avoids a huge loss, and only his athletic ability even puts him in position to come up with a play like that. Courtney Upshaw does a good job of putting the pressure on Ezel then. He keeps contained. Ezel tries to get outside, but Upshaw is right there and forces Ezel to go ahead and throw the ball off, his, off of his back foot. And one thing on these scrambles, Tyler, you brought this up in the first half, though. He's still kind of got the ball out there unprotected, especially if he's carrying it in his inside arm or his right arm as he's going to the left. Look for that thing to be knocked out. Second down and 10. Good job that time by Ufala's Courtney Upshaw getting a big tiger paw up and deflecting that pass. Incomplete. It'll be third and 10 now. Kevin, let's send it back down to you for uh, let you wrap up your 
your report there. Just to finish a thought on Ezel, you talked about him having over 10,700 yards all time, all purpose yards. Well, he's fourth all time in the state in passing, and he's behind a pretty good trio. A few guys named Jamarcus Russell, Brody Coyle, and Chris Smelly, who of course now is a freshman for Steve Spurrier Gamecocks at South Carolina. Good company there, Ezel. Look at this. Reverses his field, then turns it loose and finds Williams open for a first down at the 43 yard line. And guys, I tell you, that is a fine and individual effort. You will see Terrence Mahoney coming over to make the stop. You know, you could not ask the Ufala defense to do any more. They contained him, but Ezel re reversed his field. And really, it's not like Williams was standing out there all alone. He gave him a great pass. He catches it and turns it into a big game and a first down for the Eagles. This has turned into the Rob Ezel show here. Screen pass set up. Williams grabs it at the 47. Takes off inside the 40. Wrapped up by Ufala's Javin Harris. But another positive gain on first down inside the 40 yard line, the pickup of six. And they're, they're so successful doing all these things. Ezel obviously is the one that's kind of controlling the tempo of the game. But, but just as much, if not more, credit goes to guys like Williams and Pride, players that he can get the ball to and they make plays happen. That takes a lot of pressure off of your quarterback. Updating Ezel's numbers so far in the third quarter. Ezel. He wanted to pitch it. Now pitches it late to fly, but they're going to say his knee was down. He fall a swarming again behind the line of scrimmage. Courtney Upshaw getting back there and disrupting that play. You know, from a defensive standpoint, Ezel is the kind of player that you do not want to face because no matter what happens, he finds a way to make something happen. This is total disaster here. And he's just a couple of inches away from turning that into a game. But fortunately for the Ufala defense, his knee touched the ground before he was able to get the ball out of his hands. But, but here's something you're not going to see in, in high school football a lot. The guys like Pride and Williams, always ready for the ball to come to them. They, they never get up. They're never just looking around punching ticket stuff. They're ready to make the play themselves. Third down and nine. Ezel again. Pressure coming right up the middle. Reverses his field. Gets the pass away. He's got a man open. The pass floating just a bit too much though as DeJuan Tisdale was open for a moment and Ezel wanting a penalty but no call on the play. But Desmond Thomas comes back and he gets in position to make the play and there was a little contact there but he was playing the ball but the one thing the official he could have thrown the flag if he had wanted to because Thomas did not look back for the football. He had his head turned toward the receiver but a great play here just to get in front of the receiver. Now the play being shown on the big screen here at Legion Field. Fan Athens, or the uh, Athens fans not happy about the no call. Fourth down and nine. Athens lining up to go for it. Well, now they'll do the uh, same play we saw last night in the 4A game and it executed very well as Ezel's pooch kick will roll inside the 10 yard line. A 32-yard kick. Ufala will start first and 10 from inside their 10. We'll step aside for another timeout. Good one in the 5A state championship game. Athens still leading by three.
Well, who is that masked man? I tell you, one of our outstanding crew members, Chris McCree, doing an outstanding job here at the Super Six in Birmingham in complete agreement there. Hey, we'll tell you now, Coach Com, the established leader in providing winning solutions to athletic programs nationwide and proud to be a part of the Super Six and the Alabama Football State Championships. Coach Com is the wireless sideline communications provider for many Division I-A colleges and thousands of high school and small college programs across the country. Well, we're very late here in the third quarter. Ufala takes over first and 10 at the nine yard line. Two very time consuming possessions for both teams as possessions at a premium here in this third quarter. But this is great news for Ufala. Last time they started inside of 10, they scored. Put together a 90 plus yard touchdown drive. Williams, outstanding running, showing a lot of shiftiness. Is the junior Chris Williams as he gives his team a first down, a run of 15 yards. You know he, you know he's very well built for 5'9 and about 180 pounds with a lot of strength. He gets out, great job of the block on Pepper there, and Williams just runs through people. He's very elusive and very strong. Looks a little bigger than 5'9, doesn't he? Yes, he does. It's a close call. Did he really step out of bounds? I don't know that he did. First down, out at the 26-yard line. Here's Parker, the fullback. And he pushes his way out near the 30-yard line. A couple of Athens defenders there on the stop, Robert Brown and Todd Pepper. I mean, I'm not trying to make a big deal, but did he step out of bounds? I don't, it's a very close, close call. Well, Tyler, you asked the question. Let's see if we can see it out, figure it out. It's not there. I mean, that hill does not look like it's down. Now, I know that the breath. Good eye, Tyler. Good eye. That's what we get paid the big bucks That's for. Right. <laughs> Here is the fullback again. And I tell you, this young man does not go down the first defender to arrive. And one thing we're looking at with this Ufala offense, earlier they had the tight end with the two wide outs, and Athens was doing a good job of stuffing the option. But now Ufala has changed formation. This series they've come out, they've gone with a split and then two wide. And so now they don't have a tight end. They're making Athens spread the field defensively to open up those lanes to run the option. Third down and a yard for the Tigers. Well, the fullback Parker, this time he busts it loose. Out across midfield, taken down by the Golden Eagles' Carlos Jones. How about the fullback? Three consecutive running plays. Parker gets his team a first down at the Athens 48 after a pickup of 17. We saw this play earlier. This is the play that they actually scored on, the trap where the guard pulled, and a good job by Parker of getting up inside and picking up a first down for the Tigers. Well, the play just happens so quick. I mean, it's, it's just a matter of a split second before you're past that initial line of defense and you're into the secondary. And when you got big number five coming at you, it can be a mismatch. First and 10, new set of downs for the Tigers. Counter option, Jernigan. Horse somehow squeezed through two Athens defenders, able to pick up about three or four yards on the play. And that's the great thing about the option is that you can change your formation and you can force the defense to play your formation. And again, it gives you an extra lane, an extra gap that you can read because now where you were able to play defensively with four down linemen, now maybe you're forced to play with three. And if you, if they get the spread formation and you try to play four, it opens up the inside passing game. Second down and seven, Jernigan takes it, keeps it himself. Wrestled down at about the 42-yard line on what will be the final play of our third quarter. Tackle made by Athens' William Mean. 
We head into the fourth and final quarter from Legion Field in the 5A state championship game. Very tight one. Athens still with a field goal advantage. David Adcock, President and CEO. I've been with America's First 33 years. America's First is not about delivering profits, but delivering value and service to our members. All people living, working, and worshiping in our seven county area surrounding Birmingham are now eligible to join America's First. Join today and you'll see what it's like to do business with a financial organization that has your best interest at heart. America's First Federal Credit Union. Now you can join. I'm the guy that ties a mattress to the roof of his car with a single piece of twine. I always leave my shopping cart on a downhill slope. You're going to meet them sooner or later. So we're ready. With fair rates and fast service. I've had my right blinker on since 1983, but I'm actually turning left. For everybody. Let's talk about tomorrow. More sports. More teams. More winners. Encore Sports Medicine. Set for the fourth quarter in the 5A state championship game. Athens leading you fall at 10-7. Let's send it down to the field for an America's first sideline report. Here's Kevin Hensley. Thanks, guys. And let's take you back in time a little bit, back to, say, like 1979. If you'll take a look at this photo, that's Coach Don Creasy as the head coach of Colbert County. And number 64 behind him, well, that's Alan Creasy now coaching for Athens High School. And this is Coach Don Creasy today. And, Coach... Enjoying retirement, but I guess it's sometimes more nerve-wracking watching your son coach than actually coaching. It sure is, Kevin. Uh, of course, he's doing a lot better with you falling than I did when uh, when I was coaching. I started to say, ironically, your first ever trip to the state finals, you played you follow and got blank 29 nothing, I think. Right. Uh, we looked up. We pit, on the first play of the game. I think we pitched to our fastest back and signed with Auburn that year, and. Uh, on a quick pitch around one end, and the defensive end on the other side made the tackle for a two-yard gain. I said, uh-oh, we may be in trouble. But uh, I I'm real proud of the way Allen Bunch is playing tonight. Well, Coach, thanks for joining us, and enjoy the fourth quarter. We hope maybe your son can stay out front here. Yeah, I hope so. We're down a fingers crossed. Coach, guys, Don Creasy coached 23 years in high school, not only at Colbert County, but also at Coffee High School in Mountain Brook. And in 1998, he was inducted into the Alabama High School Sports Hall of Fame. All right, thanks a lot, Kevin. And big play there by Williams picking up yardage. Robert Brown taking him off his feet just inside the 40. You look at the stats through the third quarter. And again, same thing holding true we saw at halftime. Uh, you follow pretty much getting it done exclusively on the ground. A little more balance with uh, Athens, but still the Golden Eagles getting it done primarily through the air. And uh, time of possession just about even. First down's about even. Guys, pretty even football game on the scoreboard as well. And a couple of times, you follow us, Bill, to take advantage of some good starting positions. And then one time, Athens was down deep and didn't get anything out of it. You know, in a close, close ball game, you've got to get points when you can, Tyler. Oh, absolutely. Because you, you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get. Obviously, this, this is the final game of the season for both of these schools. So evidently, they've been doing something right all year long on defense. you got to take advantage of your opportunities. 
Oh, you saw the measurement. It's fourth and less than a yard, and Coach Legas sending his offense back out there to go for it. Huge play here for both sides, and Jernigan, quarterback sneak, and ducks his head, and it appears as though he will have the first down at about the 38-yard line. And again, you follow this thing with kind of a spread set to run the option out of with three wide outs, two to one side, one to the other. Going to make Athens defend the whole field, and they've had a success running this formation, and I would assume they're going to keep doing it until Athens devises a way to stop it. Jernigan uh, favoring that right leg a little bit. Kind of got banged up earlier in the game, but... Staying in there, first and ten. His team trying to march down and potentially regain the lead here in the pile. The host of black jerseys converging on the fullback in the game now, Xavier Cruz. Carlos Jones, the first man to deliver the hit. They were trying to run that same trout play. If you look, he was going to come block here, but he bypasses and comes here, and this tackle makes the play. Big out ball color there also as well. You've always got to make sure that you block first force when you're running a track. Second down. Delayed gift right up the middle. A nice play that time by Athens Maurice Ratliff getting off the block, taking down the ball carrier at the 34-yard line. A gain of three. It'll set up third down now, and the Tigers, if you follow, will need about six yards. Now a tough situation for you, Fala. Not a passing team, as we've seen in the stats, getting most of their productivity on the ground. So kind of an awkward situation for them. It's a, kind of a long situation to run that little dive that they enjoy up the middle. And unless you can get Jernigan on the on the outside, on the perimeter, it could be a difficult situation. You follow five of eight on third down plays. Jernigan gets the pass away, in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Devin Cruz, and there was nothing wrong with that ball thrown by Jernigan. Well, Tyler, that's one of those throws where any time, but especially in a state championship game, you've got to go up and get that one. Yeah, it's a critical third down play this time. Perfectly thrown ball by Jernigan. I think it even caught Athens off, off guard. The fact that you follow would throw a slant pattern, as you said. A little bit high, but one we know we have to come down with. And I think we're going to be in the same situation as we were earlier. We're so close to the end zone. There's no sense in punting. Go ahead, take your chances, and see if you can pick this one up. Fourth down. Tigers need to take it inside, just inside the 28-yard line. And now a stoppage in play and a timeout called by Ufala. They have now used two of their three timeouts. Another big fourth down play coming up for the Tigers when we return to Legion Field. When I was making a decision about college, I had plenty of choices. Big universities, smaller schools. I don't think I've ever been as impressed as I was the first time I visited the University of West Alabama. Everywhere I looked, I found quality programs led by faculty who could be anywhere but love it here and students that love the UWA experience. There's a sense of warmth, of family. It just feels right. There's something about this place. Since 1938, there's been only one place where you can order the freshest Gulf seafood around, and that's Winslow's Oyster House. You know Winslow's is where you can order our famous Gulf oysters, fried, stewed, or nude every day. Fresh seafood, gumbo, crab claw, stuffed flounder, whew, it just doesn't get much better. And the list goes on and on. And with four great locations, you can treat your seafood craving from almost anywhere. Winslow's Oyster House is proud to be a long-standing tradition for fresh Gulf seafood and a proud fixture on the Gulf Coast for 68 years. Life comes at you fast. Am I covered? Oh, yeah. You're covered. When the unexpected happens, Nationwide is there with the right solutions and advice. 
Huntsville has a lot to offer to host any sporting event. An initiative of Mayor Loretta Spencer, the Huntsville Sports Commission since 2000 has recruited and hosted premier national, regional, and state events representing 14 different sports. With hardworking volunteers, top-notch facilities, wonderful attractions, and a wide variety of restaurants and hotels, Huntsville, Alabama has everything to make any tournament an outstanding event. Check us out online at HuntsvilleSports.org. Well, points hard to come by in this 5A state championship game. A scoreless third quarter. So far into the fourth quarter, no points. You fall of facing a fourth down coming up. Right now, I remind you that for your next family vacation, you can look no further than the Perdido Beach Resort, located in Orange Beach, Alabama, along the Gulf of Mexico. The Perdido Beach Resort is a full-service Mediterranean-style resort offering 345 spacious rooms and suites with balconies overlooking a private beach. The resort features a friendly and hospitable staff, exquisite dining, and a full range of activities to suit any need. Log on to www.perditobeachresort.com for more information. Fourth down and six. The Tigers to go for it. Jernigan swings it out. Intended for Cruz and... Too far ahead of the intended receiver, and the ball will go over to Athens on downs. You know, Jernigan had just exactly what he wanted then. He had his outside receiver open with no one out here. There was no way for Athens to cover this, but he throws it behind him. He's not able to make it. That safety's got to come a long way before he can make that play. Yeah, that's a 12-yard cushion that time on that slot receiver. So if, if they are able to make that, that connection and pick up that completion, he could be running for the first down. Instead, Athens takes over. First down and a three-point lead. He's a fake, keeps it himself, and takes off into the open field. Gets inside, you fall a territory, and Damian Wilson making a touchdown saving tackle on a first down play on a huge game by Rob Ezel of 23 yards. And not, and not that you ever want Rob Ezel running free in their secondary. That's not a good sign. But I will give uh, you fall a credit for one thing. They are a great open field tackling football team, Tyler. He took a kind of awkward angle there. He kind of ran right out to safety. Thought he was trying to set him up. But just a beautiful job of reading the backside end, seeing the collapse of Ufala as they pursue down the line. Ezel just pulls it, and as you can see, picks up great yardage. Athens back in Ufala territory. First and ten, man in motion. He's up. Runs the option to the left, makes the pitch. A little behind Pride. Pride picks up a very short gain. Stop made that time by Desmond Thomas of Ufala. Second down and eight at the 40-yard line. Just a good job of getting off your block. I mean, there's not a whole lot else you can say about Thomas. That, that's somebody Athens is banking on their wide receiver being able to block him downfield, eight yards down the field. So in order for them to pick up good yardage, but Thomas is doing a great job. Very important drive in this football game. He follows defense needing a stop. Athens from love to score a touchdown and make this a two-possession game here in the fourth quarter. Williams cannot get much as that you fall a defense converges on him at the 37 yard line. So here's a third down play for the Golden Eagles of Athens. You know, when you have Rob Bezell, it gives you so many different options. You know, he's not just a passing quarterback. He's not just a running quarterback. He can do it all. He can throw from the pocket. He can throw on the run. And defensively, it gives you fits because you can't call things based upon down and distance because Athens is liable to do anything at any time because of the ability that this young man has. Third down and five. To Williams, and he has taken down hard. Great hit by Chris Wilson coming over to knock him out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Only a gain of two, so it'll be fourth down and three. For the first time this game, if you look, Athens goes unbalanced. They put more offensive linemen over here than normal. But we have contained here. Great job on the part of the defensive end. And I believe that is Dennis that comes up and keeps the ball inside and allows number four, Chris Wilson, to come up and make the play. And again, 
Dennis, all he did was fight down the line of scrimmage and keep the running back from getting to the corner. Athens will go for it on fourth and three. Well, do the little pooch kick again. They executed so well last time, and Ezel does it again. Takes a roll inside the 10-yard line. It will be down at the five. Well, that's just that's just good pure football right there. It's old fashioned. You don't see it a whole lot, but why not? It works. Only a 29 yard punt, but exactly what you're wanting in that situation. Because you put it on the defense, you say, OK, look, guys, if they can drive the football 95 yards on us, then, hey, maybe they deserve to win. It's your time to rise up and shut them down and not let them drive the football down the field, because if Athens can hold you follow here and get the football back, then there's a good possibility they'll be able to run out the clock and carry the state championship back down south to Ufala. Or oh, excuse me, up north to Athens. Excuse me. Boy, I missed. Well. <laughs> yeah, if they carry it down there, they may yeah. not come back. I was going to say, exactly. <laughs> if Ufala carries it home, Coach Creasy will be driving down tomorrow to pick it up to bring back. I don't know if he's got the fire to get it back or not. <laughs> Good ball. Ball start on the offense. We penalize half the distance to the goal. It'll be first down. Ironic thing is, option offensive attack for you follow normally six and a half minutes. No way. No way you're going to drive the, the football length of the football field with the option attack because you're normally picking up three, four, five yards at a time. This you follow football team though, very capable of busting 30, 40, 50 yard plays. Here's the pitch. Williams takes it in the end zone and just does get it out. It takes a shot from big Carlos Jones, 6'2", 285 pound defensive lineman, and he brought it all on that play. Mickey, I think Tyler and I just uh, saw our first nominee for the Whataburger, <laughs> quite a hit of the game right there. Well, we've been looking for a candidate, and I think we've got one right here. Great job by Phil. You always want that linebacker to fill and bring his feet. And a, just an outstanding job of filling the gap because, hey, Williams is a tough running back. You know, he doesn't go down easy. And Jones really brought the lumber and laid it to him. Didn't dive, didn't lunge, squared his shoulders up and delivered a nice lick. Second down and 12. Jernigan, the pass from the end zone, passes away and incomplete. Off the hands of the intended receiver, that was Chris Wilson. Again, a pass a little high, but a pass that's catchable. Well, it's there, as Tyler pointed out earlier. He's given about a 12 to 14 yard cushion on the inside receiver, and that slant route's over. They've got to take advantage of that, because if he catches that ball, they're out there with a first down and more. Yes. Slant's a dangerous pass to be completed as far as the defense is concerned because as a pass is completed when you run it wide open he turns it north and south makes one guy miss he's still running instead a very tough situation here for the Tigers third down and 12 from their own three yard line Athens brings the blitz off the corner and Jernigan will get rid of it and it is amazingly complete to Chris Wilson out at the 30-yard line. I'm sitting here thinking maybe there's a flag going to be thrown. He completes the pass out to the 30, 28-yard play. First down, you follow. Unbelievable play that time by Jernigan. Pressure comes from both ends. Athens is just going to pinch their outsides on the outside blitz. This, this play should have been a safety. Athens is able to get enough bodies in the backfield to bring down Jernigan, but one just find himself just enough time. Hey, why not? Throw it up. You know where your receivers are going to be. Allow them. Give them an opportunity to make the play. And Jernigan still favoring that left ankle. Jernigan keeps it. Breaks one tackle at the 31-yard line. Scampers forward for a short gain of two before Athens' Antonio Long finishes it off. Earlier in the game, Mickey, you pointed out that Jernigan had, had hurt his ankle some. And again, after that last pass completion, even though it was complete, Pepper and other Athens Eagles putting a lot of pressure on Jernigan, and he comes up limping even more. And even coming back to the huddle now, you can see it's still giving him trouble. He's going to look up at that game clock, though, and see that it's under five minutes left to play. And that thing's going to get well real quick. <laughs> there is no tomorrow. Second down, Jernigan right up the middle of the fullback. Not a bad decision the way this young man has played 
in the second half as Chiron Parker picks up a first down out to the 44 yard line after a gain of 12. And the thing you have to worry about with Jernigan limping around a little bit is, you know, he is the leading rusher with almost 1,300 yards and rushed for 21 TDs for this Tigers offense. And so that's one of their main weapons. It's not full force right now, but as Tyler said, for the next four minutes and 25 seconds, he's going to give it everything he has. First down, Jernigan to throw it on first down. Now he will run it. And Jernigan playing with a lot of guts right now. With the injured leg, he still picks up five yards on the play. Carlos Jones credited with the tackle for the Golden Eagles. You follow just trying to steal one right here. A little play action off of the option. Have a lot of success running that fullback. Athe doing a great job, though, staying at home, playing the option, but the safeties are playing so deep they're not going to give up the deep ball. And, you know, this drive is really do or die for this Ufala Tiger football team because they've had to use a couple of timeouts early with only one left. They can't afford to get the ball back to Athens because they can only stop the clock one time. Oh, they moved it from the three all the way out near midfield. First down, should say second down at about five, Jernigan. Pushed back by the Golden Eagles, John Wallace, forward progress. They'll spot him at the 49. Just a busted play. You had two guys in the same position. Didn't know, couldn't really see the angle there to see if Athens might have just squeezed that defensive end to really disrupt the play. Well, as we go down to the three-minute mark of the football game, third down and three for Ufala. So before the play. Flag thrown. We had a little premature movement on the left side of the offensive line. Dead ball. False start on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty. It'll be third down. But you know, you know, even though obviously you would love to have third and four. Right now, you really don't worry about the third and eight because you've got two downs to pick up that eight yard. You're going to go for it on fourth down no matter what. So you don't need to get panicky here and worry about just heaving the ball down the field. Pick up about four or five, six yards, something that's going to give you a very makeable fourth down attempt. I'm sure that message was relayed on the sideline as Jernigan brings in the play. Now they'll split two receivers to the near side of the field. Overload the line to the left. Here is the give to the fullback. That is Xavier Cruz, and he's going to pick up very little, maybe two yards, three yards to the 49. Here's a fourth down play coming up for you, Fall. And as we go down near the two minute mark of the game, this could be the game for the Tigers. You know, barring if, if they don't pick up this fourth down, barring a turnover, you know, it will be the game because Athens can run the clock out as you follow, can only stop it one time. They need to take it to the Athens 46 yard line. Fourth down and six. They just do get the playoff. Jernigan takes off. Tries to get around the corner. He does, and he's got his team a first down, steps out of bounds, and stops the clock. And that is a great effort by the Ufala senior quarterback. Tyler said it earlier that regardless of how that ankle feels, he's going to play great for the last four minutes. He gets pressure from the outside, and he steps up inside. Pepper comes. He steps up. Now he goes with the perimeter because he knows contain's gone, and he makes number 22, Antonio Long, miss. And he not only does he pick up the first down, but he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. And updating Jernigan's numbers, over 70 yards rushing, and you fall on that previous play now. It's converted on three of six fourth down opportunities. Jernigan takes off right up the middle, spins his way down to around the 35-yard line, hit by Athens number 22, Antonio Long, and the clock becoming a factor as you fall moving in closer to potential field goal range. Again, you follow with one timeout left here. 
One of the toughest things for any defense to defend against is an agile quarterback, one that can make a, a lot of plays. If, unless you're spying him with a linebacker or something, which Athens isn't doing because you fall so good everywhere else, then you're always going to run the risk of a quarterback like Jernigan being able to pick up good yardage. Second down and short. Jernigan taken down behind the line of scrimmage. McCullough was there, as was John Wallace. That was a big defensive play for this Athens defense, and it would force you fall up. I believe they called their last time out. Yes, they have. They have burned their last time out of the game with 53 seconds left in regulation. We'll step aside for a timeout and return to the 5A title game just a moment. Today, on a panoramic parcel overlooking Mobile Delta, safely set 50 feet above sea level, the first tower of an exciting new resort community is taking shape. The Blakely at Cypress Point, a mere 10 minutes from downtown Mobile, yet in every sense a world away. For more information or to make a reservation, give us a call or join us online. The Blakely at Cypress Point, the best of both worlds and only 10 minutes between them. Everything free with my checking, online bill pay, check card. Just let me write all the checks I need for free. No minimum balance. I want CD rate bonuses. I want everything free with my checking. Everything. At AmSouth, we listen. You get it all in our positively free or 50 plus free checking and something you didn't ask for. Cash back with check card rewards. Cash back? I love it. Now you're talking. Now that's my kind of free. AmSouth's free checking. It's your kind of free. Dreamland Barbecue first opened back in 1958 in the deep south, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, by Big Daddy John Bishop. He used to say ain't nothing like him nowhere about his barbecue ribs and his customers. You see, over the years, lots of celebrities, pro athletes, and some Hollywood folks have been to Dreamland. But to Big Daddy and all the folks cooking and smiling at Dreamland, everyone who comes in is treated like a celebrity. So come on, see for yourself why we say Dreamland Barbecue ain't nothing like him nowhere. And back in the final 53 seconds of the 5A state championship game, Athens clinging to a 10-7 lead over the Eufaula Tigers, who face a third down and two. And its drive starting from their own five-yard line, they've marched 58 yards in 11th place, almost six minutes time of possession. As Eufaula trying to inch closer to a potential game-tying field goal, the fullback, Parker, Stop short of the first down, so it will be fourth down in about a yard. They've already called the play. They know what they're going to run. They should get right up to the line and run it. Again, they cannot stop the clock. They are out of timeouts. Jernigan on the sneak. And this will all depend on the spot. They actually had to get past the 35-yard line. The old left foot, right foot drill, Tyler. Left foot, he's if he's coming in from this side, left foot, he's got it. Right foot, he doesn't. Now, if you're, you're you fall up, you need to have Jernigan over on the sideline because they're going to measure this. So let's get a game plan. Let's, let's let's know what we're about to try to do. How close we have to get. Get your field goal kicker ready. Get a couple plays lined up on the sideline. Coach Plague is obviously upset about something. Looks as though they're going to have it, I believe. We'll see. They'll stretch the chain, and boy, they just do get it by the nose of the football. You know, he may have been upset, Mickey, that he maybe felt like the officials didn't stop the clock soon enough, let too much time run off the clock. As we see Jernigan getting down low behind that big offensive line and scooting across the 35 to pick up that first down. Close. Now they wind the clock, first and ten. Jernigan loads up the shotgun. 
They love to get some more yardage to get closer to field goal range. Ready to throw against his body, completes the pass, then it comes loose. They're going to rule it a completed pass. And out of bounds inside the 30, so that will stop the clock. Jacquez Pride covering and making the tackle. Good job of getting outside the pressure there, getting it to the sideline. And again, right now, if you're, you fall, you've got to use that sideline as your friend to stop the clock. Jernigan gets it away under heavy pressure, and it's almost intercepted. The defender mistiming his jump. Nearly coming down with a game-ending interception. And you've got one play, and it's got to go to the end zone. If I'm Athens, I've got about three or four guys at about the five-yard line. Nothing is going to get behind me. A lot, a lot of pressure on this play, but Jernigan does the right thing. He's got to get rid of the ball. A sack, the game is over. A five-yard completion over the middle of the field, game's probably over. Incomplete pass or a ball out of bounds is the best thing that could have happened to you, Fallout. Now at least they have a chance. Well, it looks as though they're going to pin their hopes on their place kicker, Clayton Slade. They will be trying a pretty long field goal here of 40-plus yards, and Athens calls their first time out to uh, ice the kicker on this chilly Friday night. And I don't know the strength of this young man's leg, but on this chilly night, that is a very difficult field goal to make. And I think if you're Athens, I think it's a good timeout, and not necessarily even to ice the kicker per se, Mickey, but say, look, you know, they've got one chance here. Worst case scenario for us, they make it and we go to overtime. Worst case for us, two things, play the fake. Make sure that we don't give them an easy touchdown. Play the fake. Second thing, do not rough the kicker. You know, this is a 40-plus yard field goal. Make him kick it good because there's no sense in roughing him and give him a, giving him another chance at it. So, again, I think that's really what the Athens coaching staff wanted to call this timeout for because as cold as it is, there's no need to ice a kicker tonight. <laughs> Well, it all comes down to this for Eufaula. The Athens kicker, Matt Jackson, with a 23-yarder late in the first half to give Athens a three-point lead. And now, Clayton Slade, our correction, they've got a, another kicker in now to try this one from 45 yards. And the kick is away. It will be well short and wide right. And that will do it. Time has expired. Number 83, George, Giorgio McCullough attempting the long field goal try in Athens. Has won it. The 5A state championship goes to the Golden Eagles, their first state championship since 1976, and their first state championship since the inception of the Super Six. You see Coach Creasy, and he sees us no good, and he says, guys, we're taking that blue trophy home up north. There you go, baby. There you go, baby. There you go. There you go, baby. you go, baby. There you go, baby. There you go, baby. Well, the Athens Golden Eagles coming into this Super Six, 11 and three, the third seed, and again, the only third seed in Super Six history to make it to the Super Six. So we can confidently say they're the only third seed to win a state championship at the Super Six. Just a tremendous football game. Great effort on the part of both teams here. And you, you fall it definitely has nothing to be ashamed of. Played a great football game. Just came up a little bit short. It is really one of those games that you just you ran out of time. Let's go down to the field. Kevin Hensley with an America's First sideline report. Coach, congratulations. What an outstanding ball game. The second half, nobody could score, but you played ball control, and your defense came up big when it counted. I tell you, you know, it's a, our offense was able to move the ball and put us in better field position the second half. We wouldn't have been able to hold up against them if our offense hadn't been successful getting the ball on the end of the field. And then we did the, our, our, our quick kick game, got the ball down inside the 10 twice, and made them have a long field. And, you know, I can't say enough about 
about how hard these guys played and, the, and, and what they put into it. You know, I, I'd like to take all the credit, but, you know, I didn't play a down. Well, this young man to your right here, Rob Creasy. I mean, Rob Ezell, what a game he had, and uh, certainly very deserving of the MVP honors. Well, you know, that's that's how he's played for us since he was a freshman. You know, he, and he's taking some knocks, he's taking some bangs, he's taking some 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 to a lot of criticism from a lot of people, but he's always played to win, and he's always put his team first. And you know, I, I wish we could have him for one more year. Well, 30 years ago, Athens took home the state title. It's been a long time coming getting the Eagles back here. You saw your dad take home a couple of state titles at Colbert County. Very special, I would think, to have him in the stands here watching you bring it home. You know, it's special to have him in every game we have. And if it, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have won this state championship. You know, we have him and Coach Steve Rivers and Larry McCoy and Ronnie Phillips and all the guys that have been at Athens and, and, and help establish the tradition that we have and the fans that we have. And, and these players, the things that they did, you know, that's that's what high school football is all about, and I'm just proud to be a part of it. Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, Kevin. And the 5A state championship trophy is headed north to Athens, Alabama. We'll be back to put a wrap on the 5A championship game in just a moment. Huntsville has a lot to offer to host any sporting event. An initiative of Mayor Loretta Spencer, the Huntsville Sports Commission since 2000 has recruited and hosted premier national, regional, and state events representing 14 different sports. With hardworking volunteers, top-notch facilities, wonderful attractions, and a wide variety of restaurants and hotels, Huntsville, Alabama has everything to make any tournament an outstanding event. Check us out online at HuntsvilleSports.org. And the celebrating continues down on the turf here at Legion Field. The Athens Golden Eagles, 5A state champions, with a 10-7 victory over Eufaula. Time now for our what a burger, what a hit of the game. Guys, you called it. Well, no question about this one. Carlos Jones comes up big for the Athens Golden Eagles. And not only scoring the touchdown, clearing up with the what a burger hit of the game. And there's our nationwide player of the game, Tyler Rob Ezell. Obvious choice tonight. Just a lot of fun to watch. He, he made things happen, not only with throwing the ball. Couldn't have been any sharper in the first half, but, but in the second half, doing it with his legs, keeping the, the chains moving. Great job of, of running this offense. Congratulations to the Athens Golden Eagles, 5A state champions for 2006 with their 10-7 win over Eufaula. Coming up tomorrow, another big day in the Super 6, 1A championship game, 11 a.m., 6A title game, Hoover and Prattville with a 3 o'clock kickoff. For our entire HSTV crew, Kevin Hensley, Boji Wood, Tyler Watts, Mickey Shadrick saying so long from Legion Field. Oh